The Sesh Podcast, episode 131, take one. Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall. And I am Janelle, and we are joined by a such an exciting guest. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Kendall and I have our little starstruck, honestly, that you mm-hmm. are on the show. We have Marlena Stell with us, you guys. Hey nice to be here thanks for having me i appreciate it of course yeah she (laughs) flew all the way here yes Mm -hmm. she's kind of struggling because we're so high altitude here Mm -hmm. couldn't breathe this altitude is it's rough (laughs) i thought i was dying when i got off the plane i was like (laughs) i was texting my husband i was like i think i'm gonna die on the i'm getting off the plane i can't breathe i know it's just yeah there's no air we gotta like tell people in advance Mm -hmm. that yeah you get off the plane and you're like suffocating yeah there's no air here the oxygen is minimal yeah. and i forget i'm like ah, oh, whatever my lungs yeah. are used to it but then other I people are like dude can't yeah. breathe yeah, yeah. well Where thanks for higher? making it on still we I'm really so appreciate it <laughs> yeah. we have been watching you for ever ever like, literally since before i started youtube i would watch you when i was in high school senior year especially i was um had very little friends senior year because i was like I really was over friend. you were you were already in college <laughs> true <laughs> But I was like very much in my loner phase. And so I, on my off periods during lunch and stuff, I would go in my car and take naps. <laughs> yeah, she did. I was such a loser. But I would watch YouTube videos. A rested loser. Okay. A, re- a well rested loser. <laughs> I had you. I'd call you yes. up. And you're like on your own, on your own your lunch. I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, we would. My car. We would always call. But anyways, um, I'd always watch your videos too. Aww. And it's just crazy that ten plus years later we're sitting next to you weird i'm Mm -hmm. freaking out a little yeah it's it's definitely trippy i was just telling uh marlena at lunch uh or brunch we went and got some good food but um i was telling her that i first found her videos from her soda inspired eyeshadow looks that's some old school stuff right there yes i love that so iconic (laughs) yep (laughs) dr pepper eyes root beer (laughs) eyes it was a whole different world on YouTube. It really day. was. That's what we were talking about is how much YouTube has changed mm-hmm. throughout so the years. Different. Yeah, it's changed so much. It's completely different yeah. now. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, really cool. But I do miss that like old school nostalgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really feels almost like a dream when I think back to those days and what like, it was like. Yeah. And you've been on YouTube since 2008. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A long time. A real OG. I know. I'm like, like dang, I feel I feel like I'm the, the old person in the group. I'm like, it's been a long time. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so fast, though. Yeah. I know. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Yeah, because YouTube started 2006. Somewhere. Wait, really? I think so. I believe yeah. so. She, she it was wasn't on... before that? Dang. So you're like oh. one of the first people on YouTube. That's so cool. Let's maybe see. 2005. Maybe. Curly's going to fact check me here. <laughs> check. 2005. 2005. February. 2005. Okay. 2005. Wow. Yep. Oh my yep. goodness. Yep. You're probably on before Charlie bit my finger. Oh, Charlie bit me. That really hurt. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about really that. Bad. She's like, what? <laughs> oh, I remember the little kid. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so cute. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, that really hurt. <laughs> that re- it's still it's hurting. Dead. And that was so like cute. the funniest video yeah. ever. Yeah. Like and that kid's in college now or graduated. Or graduated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, Probably. That's, that's surreal. Please. Right. Right. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I've been watching you forever and it's such an honor to have you here on the show. Um, would you mind like starting out by telling people yes. a little bit about your background? For and- anyone who doesn't know who you are. Yeah. If you're living under a rock out there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been on YouTube since 2008. That's how I got my start was just doing makeup videos and I was a teacher at the time and I just wanted to have fun. I wanted some social outlet and everyone would ask me like, how do you do your makeup look? It looks so good because I loved makeup. That was like my creative juices flying. And um, so I was like, I tried to type it because back then you'd have those forums. Oh, yeah. Back when forums were really popular. Oh, yeah. You take the picture of yourself yes. with the old school camera. and it yep. looks Step like- one, step yeah. two. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. I can't type this out. Let me just turn on a camera. So I bought this camera and I had those this is old school light from Target. You know, the ones had like the three lights and you'd have to like, they're all attached to the same pole. Oh, yeah. I'm dating myself right oh, now. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. No, yep. And I'd have to flip the lights different yep. ways because you didn't have like... <laughs> That's what I used at first too. Yes. Oh, that just unlocked a memory. Yeah, wow. because you didn't have lighting equipment no. back right, then. Right. I was like, all right. So I would just sit literally in my like second bedroom with these like, the mask curtains behind me of this cheap light equipment. I'm just like, I'm just going to do this makeup look. And that's how it got started. And that is so funny. Yeah. I love that. It's like a way to connect with people. I never yep. imagined that it would become like what it 
is now is just yeah. wild, a wild ride. I was just trying to like help people feel good about themselves and yep. learn how to do makeup because I was like, that's what it made me feel was like mm -hmm. beautiful and confident, all these positive things. And I was like, I want other people to feel that. So that's how I got started. And then a couple years later, I was like, you know what? I really want to start a makeup line. I felt like makeup was really expensive. Like all the high end stuff was so yeah. expensive. Yes. But then drugstore was crap. Like it you, was back then. Yeah, it like was. the Maybelline Moose Orange. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God. The Moose. <laughs> the orange. Oh, oh, that was dangerous for me. We had it, and you had the orange line here. Like, yeah. It, it was a moment. <laughs> it was a yes. Moment. It was my whole high school was wearing that. Oh, so. for oh sure. Yeah. Did you used to put like foundation on your lips or yes. concealer? Me yes. too. The that was like my lips. thing. Yes. Yes. I thought I'll it was like never really hot. Forget like, one time I was hanging out at Kendall's house and she comes out of the shower. She's like, yeah. And like takes some foundation and goes, <laughs> and it's just like rubbing it and I'm sitting there like I'm like that's weird I've never seen that but I did I'm younger than her so I was like I have to do everything she does because I wanted to be like her so I was like all right so I would I went home and started doing it and I like came out my mom was like dude what the fuck is going on I was like what like it was a moisturizer you would put concealer on your lips well, now like, it's like full circle because that's the you know who Meredith technique. Duxbury is yeah that's, yeah. What, yeah. that's, that's true. Technique the technique and, and actually, we tried it we didn't actually kind of work worked really like, yes yeah. we were like we were like this is gonna look awful we did it on yeah. the show yeah it and it turned bad. out pretty good and now I do my makeup like I always start by warming it up on my you hands did it today I, this morning. I do it every day now <laughs> really yes I'm back to my old ways oh yeah everything it's gonna come back around eventually so so you just true. write it out long enough, just, just hold out and right. come back. Yep, it's so true. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Oh, so you've been doing YouTube for since 2008. Yeah. And then you started your own makeup line, line Makeup mm -hmm. Geek, which is oh, such good stuff. It was iconic. <laughs> yeah. So many good stuff. Such yeah. good stuff. Yeah. I told her I'm not getting rid of what I have, even if it's expired. Like mm -hmm. It's living yep. in my collection. What forever. year did you start that again? I started working on it in 2010 is when I started like researching and doing all of that. And event, it launched the end of 2011, early 2012. Okay. Wow. So it's been like That's 11 earlier years. than I thought. Wow. Yeah. 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 And then you had to close it recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I announced last year was closing it just for like a ton of different reasons. It's mm -hmm. a, a lot to get into. But the final thing was COVID, honestly, because we had rebrand was like yeah. all new product that launched in January 2020. And then, of course, COVID hit right after uh. that. Yeah. And we had a ton of people on wait list to get product and just sh production shut down. Mm. And so it kind of a, like annihilated our cash flow. And we were able to hang in there for a little bit longer. And then just production lead times were still really slow and sales weren't what they used to, which makes sense. I mean, people aren't going to wear makeup when they're not leaving their house. Sure. So it was just kind of the perfect storm. But it was it was a decision I need to make. But I feel at peace about it now because yeah. I'm ready to start something new, which I am. Um. And I just I, I get something fresh and new. That's my favorite part is like building something from the ground mm -hmm. up and getting to like be the creative part and yeah. design what yeah. it's going to look like and it's what exciting. are the products. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was giving us some behind the scenes look at things yes. today. So yes, yes. very yes. exciting things coming, you guys. Well, yes. get ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are just so excited for you to come on the show and just I mean, we have so much we want to talk about. So much. Mm -hmm. We're like. We actually had some intro topics for today, and we were yeah, like, we, we're like, we don't uh, even have time. Whatever. We have so much to go over with you. It's not as interesting <laughs> yeah. as what we have here. Yeah. And this is Marlena's first time podcasting. Yeah. Yes. So I'm not even going to lie, you guys. I'm just a little tad nervous. Even though I've been on camera for 15 years, I was like, what a podcast. Like, how is this different? And the microphone thing, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> am I going to like tap it with my, I think there's makeup on there now too, but it's all right. Oh, we are. It could be my makeup. makeup. <laughs> Usually I'm on that mic. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I'm hard because like, you have to really get like close. really close. Yeah. I know. She's like, get it closer. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm eating it yeah, right now. Yeah, you kind of have to. It was so funny. We got new, what are these things called? Mic caps? Or, yeah. Yeah, we got, we got new ones. And then we did that Meredith Duxbury thing. We throw them out. destroyed them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we we go through these a lot. Yeah, yeah. I have always lipstick on mine. Yeah, you foundation do. everywhere. And I have a bad habit of like going like this when I'm not talking, <laughs> which is like stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> but anyways, whatever. So yeah, yeah I mean, where should we even over. start? Obviously, a few weeks back, Kendall and I had talked about mm -hmm. how Marlena was going to be coming on the show, yes. and you guys connected on Twitter a month mm -hmm. ago, maybe. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. before then, we've been like oh, okay. tweeting to each other. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I've been following kind of follow- That's why it was so surreal yeah. to see you too. I was like, oh my gosh, like I've been watching you and following you for so long. And Which it's was so, cool. so trippy to me because yeah. I just, that didn't even occur to me. Like when I saw you were following me, I was like, oh my God, she knows who I am. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of similar viewpoints and we're yes. both not afraid to say what we think on Twitter You're and beyond. You're both very and bold and blunt. Yes. So we love that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and yeah, we've been talking a lot about that too. So we have many things there we want to get into as well. Mm-hmm. But obviously, recently, there you finally hit your breaking point after mm-hmm. seven years of silence, mm-hmm. which we talked about earlier. It was really difficult to keep all of that in. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine what that was like. Yeah. Um, but you finally came forward. And uh, what, what made you want to do so on reddit yeah i think honestly i really pondered on it for a while and i'd been sitting on it for like you said so many years and i didn't want to i was almost going to do a video on youtube but i that's kind of like my sacred space now and i swore to myself after i did like the dear influencer video Mm. and that got so much traction and a lot of people really appreciated that i was blunt and honest and some people didn't and i've come to a place in my life especially after i had my daughter where i want my my certain spaces to be very like toxic free. So sure. even bringing up some of this stuff, even though mm-hmm. people look at it like, oh, you're talking about old news or you're talking about someone else. Like for me, it's still very, there's emotions attached to it. Like I'm not a robot. I, you know, obviously cared about someone and yeah. this happened. Um, So I chose Reddit because I was like, well, it's not my YouTube channel. And I was like, if I post on Twitter, it's going to be like 50 posts long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Like, the character limit. You know? Except for not now. Now you can <laughs> literally true. post an essay on there. Oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> if you have Twitter blue. I know. Maybe I should have done it on Twitter. I don't uh, know. But I was already I on Reddit. Just I enjoy it as a just a human being. Like I yeah. love like I spend a lot of time on different forums, not just makeup related. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to post it here. And it was kind of like an emotional release for me because after I posted, it was like, <sighs> like the biggest breath mm. taken ever because it's like I've I been bet. sitting on that for so long and just didn't want to speak it because I knew there'd be blowback of some sort and I just didn't yeah. want to deal with it and now I'm just like I'm in my I don't give a fuck area just good like, <laughs> we, we love that, that. <laughs> just, I don't get there's something that happens after you have a kid especially and then after me it's turning so 40 true. I think it's a combination of me mm-hmm. just getting older I just started not caring about what people think anymore and then after I had my daughter it's like everything else seems so small yeah. in comparison I was like why am I staying silent on stuff? And why am I trying to make everyone else happy? Like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to speak what is the truth or what I feel. And Mm -hmm. some people are going to appreciate it. Some are not going to like me for it. And that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, your child's going to look back on that and be proud of you for speaking out when it was important to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking up when you, for when you see, you know, things going wrong or what you feel like you're being wronged or just in the world Mm -hmm. in general and speaking up. I mean, we were talking about that at, brunch we need more people like that and Mm -hmm. you know people with platforms to speak up and not be afraid to lose followers or like piss some someone off or whatever at the end of the day like there's a lot on the line yeah you're never gonna make everyone happy anyways right like even if you don't say something someone's gonna be upset that you didn't didn't. say something right 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 didn't you tell this sooner we would have known like there's always gonna be different opinions it's like you just have to do so true Mm -hmm. yeah and i think the people like i was saying earlier too the people who appreciate that i think that just goes a long way you know mm-hmm. obviously you lose some people along the way but yeah clear house yeah bye it's good to just say say what's important to you stand up for what you believe and your values and mm-hmm. i've always loved that about you you know that you've especially recently really got on twitter and it's something about having a baby that it is i mean i guess maybe once you go through that nothing else is scary anymore yeah, You're like i, I can do anything <laughs> right <laughs> You get it, like, because yeah. you just had your baby too, and yep. I. It's, there's something about after you have your child, it's just like you feel fierce. You're like, yeah, I just birthed a human yep. being. Like, I can literally do anything. I now. can do anything. I <laughs> don't care. Like, I can take this yep. on. Like, yep. there's so much power to be have after that, and I wish I had had that power, you know, of, or believing in myself early on. But I think it just took me having to become a mom and yep. just growing personally to be like, you know what, this is how I'm going to live my life, and not yep. everyone's going to love it, but. I just don't care. Yeah. As long as you're authentic to yourself, I think that's what matters the most. And mm-hmm. so true. I mean, a lot of people, I think, are going to look at you and be like, oh, well, this person's not afraid to be themselves. And that's exactly. inspiring. And whether or not you agree with them, who cares? They're yeah. authentic to themselves. And at the end of the day, I feel like that's the most important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. Well said. As a parent, I am constantly questioning myself, making sure I am doing things right, especially as a first time parent. And one of the things I am always wondering is if I'm doing enough 
to keep my child entertained, engaged, and her mind stimulated. It's really tough to come up with creative hands-on projects, let alone gather all the materials. So KiwiCo was created to bring those experiences to life so you don't have to. My daughter is nine months old now, almost 10 months, I can't believe it. I told KiwiCo that my daughter loves animals. Obviously we have 10 pets and so she's super into animals and especially stuffed animals right now. So they customized her crate to be panda themed and it was so cute. Everything in there was amazing. There was a bunch of great wood toys, which she really loves. She got a big stuffed animal panda and she got one of those wire toys with the beads. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but you know, they're classic. The ones that you move the beads along the wires and it's the cutest one I've ever seen. Plus it had suction cups, so it stuck to her high chair and it's awesome. And I'm so excited to get more of these crates as she gets older and is able to do more because right now she's just kind of banging toys together. I mean, if you have a young one, you know how it is. But I'm excited to get into more of the crafts and projects that they offer with her in the future. KiwiCo is a super cool subscription box for your kids that offers multiple lines of fun and enriching projects that are designed to spark creativity, innovation, and learning. And they have developmentally appropriate projects for every child and interest level from newborn all the way to teens, which is super impressive. And they have developed over 2,000 projects in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And each crate comes with multiple projects that will keep them busy for hours and off their screens. KiwiCo has been creating awesome family experiences for the last 10 years with over 40 million crates delivered and over 20,000 five-star reviews. Super impressive. So redefine play with KiwiCo. Right now you can get 50% off your first month. Crates start at just $14 per month, plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com, promo code SESH. That's kiwi spelled like the fruit, K-I-W-I, promo code SESH. 50% off your first month plus free shipping at KiwiCo, K-I-W-I-C-O.com with promo code SESH. KiwiCo.com, promo code SESH. Okay, so obviously one of the reasons that you went, well, the, basically the main reason that you went on Reddit was to talk about how your brand was wronged, really, by someone who was very close to you and that, you know, a business partner and a friend. And... You really laid it all out. And we read the um, Reddit post on on the sesh a few mm -hmm. weeks back. Um, but obviously, you know, reading it is one thing and hearing it directly from you is another yeah. thing. So as much as you're comfortable talking about, like, we would love to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we want this to just be a platform for you to continue to get it all out, yeah. you know? I think so. What a lot of people don't know, and I'm sorry, I feel like I'm already getting emotional, which I don't know why. <laughs> no, it's okay. I think a lot of people don't know is that they saw the growth of Makeup Geek happen because it happened so fast. Like it literally went yeah. from um, when it launched in early 2012 to 2016, it was literally less than five years. It went from zero revenue in my parents' basement to $22 million company. That's, yeah. first Amazing. off, that's just incredible. Yeah, wow. and so inspiring. You. Yeah, Thank that's you. badass. So awesome. Like no investors, no loans, no, wow. you know, no funding, nothing. It was literally grown from like, I took YouTube money and started, you know, we sold like brushes and then took that money and built eyeshadows and just organically grew in. It just blew up really, really quickly. Um, but then when 2016 hit, it was like the my whole world crashed before my eyes. And it was multiple things, some things I haven't talked about publicly still yet, which it's, I don't know if I'll talk about some of that happened. But one of the things was the collaboration with Jacqueline. And I'm not here to bash her anything because I never want to come across as like trying to tear any other woman down because mm -hmm. I very much am about a women empowerment. But I think the reason why I snapped recently was just seeing the thing that happened with Caitlin, seeing yeah. another... Mm -hmm woman with a self-funded brand that was just trying to build something for herself, had a baby, yep. was a new mom, like yep. seeing that all go down just pissed me the hell off. It was off. brutal. I was just ticked me off to no end. And that's when I was like, fuck this. I'm going to speak up about it because this isn't right. Yeah. And I reached out to Kaylin to ask if she needed help with anything. Um, You know, she's focusing on her baby right now, which I totally respect. And um, I think she's doing what's best for her. But just seeing that happen to her just like s just pissed me off. And I was like, OK, I'm going to tell my story because I don't want to see this keep happening to other women, because if this is obviously a pattern, yeah. then it's going to just continue. Sure. Yep. Yep. So, and for those of you who don't know, um, we have talked about this mm -hmm. pretty extensively on the show. But Kaylin is it's the whole like cozy, cozy Coz. situation. Mm -hmm. um, Jacqueline's is called cozy, right? Yeah. But I think so. Uh, Kaylin had Coz, Coz, but it's spelled the same. Yes. And they have very similar products. 
mm-hmm. blankets and robes and socks and yeah. Even the logo was, looked a little bit like very similar vibes. Very yeah. similar, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, very upsetting to see that happen mm-hmm. um, to her. And you know, a lot of people came to Jacqueline's defense that well, she didn't trademark it. Well, it turns out Jacqueline doesn't even she didn't have trademark it, it trademarked either. Just yeah, just to see if I could help Kaylin out, or you know, just to see what was going on. It's not trademarked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which that's a whole other story. Um. So she just totally stomped all over her. And then there was something recently, too, the um, jewelry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, with Which Lana jewelry. You, yep. Yes. Um, she had ripped she, off one of her designs. Yeah, and, one of the most, like, well-selling necklaces. Right. Like, um, a 10-year bestseller. Which mm-hmm. Jacqueline yeah. had not... She wore her necklace yeah. on Instagram, was promoting that brand before, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, was a supporter of it, and then came out with something that looks quite similar, and... Mm-hmm. You know, people were like, this is weird. It looks very, very similar. And she just kind of like blew them off. And and they even acknowledged it too. Yeah, they posted something that was, I mean, Mm -hmm. not direct, but very like, this is our timeless piece we've had for a long time. Mm And and I believe Jacqueline made a statement too, along the lines of like, this is based off my personal jewelry collection. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I can just copy anything in my collection, apparently. Yeah. Like, it's one thing to have, you know, a lot of people are coming to defense and say, oh, if you make it cheaper, then what's the problem or whatever? That's fine to have something that's inspired by it, but to, like, completely rip off the design completely. Yeah. And especially, I mean, even though Lana's jewelry is very well known, it's still, it's not this massive corporation. This is still a woman-owned brand. Right. And I think that's what sets me off more than anything else is it's not like you're trying to rip off a big corporation that doesn't care and they're just going to move on to the next product. These are women-owned brands that are, like building something for themselves. They started mm-hmm. with something and that's what Lana started with was that that necklace. She said it was named after her daughter yeah. too, which I'm yeah. like, come on, that's another, it's just not right. Just because mm-hmm. something's legal doesn't mean that it's moral. Mm-hmm. It's not morally right. Like there's still lines that are crossed that just because you technically and legally can doesn't mean that it's okay to do. Sure. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah. 100%. So seeing all of that made you want to That's why I spoke speak up. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, because I was just, I'm done. Like yeah. I just, you know, like, for one thing to happen for me, I don't want to sit here and like pretend like I'm a victim or this and that. It's when I see it happening to other women on top of myself, then it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to speak up because this is yeah. a problem. Yep. So you have been dealing with this behind the scenes for how many years? Seven years? You, or Yeah, seven since 2016. Okay. 20, 2015, 2016. Okay. But 2016 was like the year that just so much happened with the company that just blew up in my face it was like god a nuclear bomb just blew up and uh, one thing terrible. after another that happened all in the same year that was just demolished everything like uh. business wise and personal life and everything all yeah. at once yeah you've been through the trenches big time for yeah. for quite some time now yeah, i feel like this is my first year where i feel like i'm finally like crawled myself it was kind of a running joke with me and my my team at makeup geek because they saw it firsthand everything i was going through they're like they called it uh, the seven layers of hell. They're like, well, we're on layer two of hell right now. Oh we're god. almost out of it. Like, oh my god! <laughs> you know, because they're like, we're climbing out. So I give props to my team too for you know all those years of just climbing out of yeah. the trenches of dealing with a lot of stuff, which it happens with business and life. You have ebbs and flows, but it was it was brutal with so much happening at once, and that was that was one piece of it. Mm-hmm. Was that collaboration that fell through? Can and, you talk a little bit yeah. more about that? Yeah. So. Basically, what happened was they had a collaboration. I had one with Manny, too, which did wildly successful, um, did really, really well. He was actually a really dream to work with. Super easy to work with, like very involved, emailed right back, picked a beautiful color story, was like absolute dream to work with. Him and Kathleen, too. like an eyeshadow palette? Yeah, he had his yeah. eyeshadow palette. I still use it to say, I don't know if Manny's watching this, but I still use that palette. It's old as hell, but I'm still putting it on my face. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Manny seems like a really nice person. Yeah. He was literally a dream to work with. And so was Kathleen. Both, yeah. Like, absolute She's an angel. We love Kathleen. to work with. Like, just, mm-hmm. uh, it was just a really good experience. And so I was, you know, I'm thinking that with this collaboration, I was friends with Jacqueline. Yeah. It's not like this was a random stranger. Right. I'd flown out to see her several sure. times. She came out to LA. When did you guys first meet? We met in. I can't remember if it was 2013 or 2014. Okay. First time we met was in LA because she was flying out. I think she was working on something with another brand or something. And I was flying down to work on product for Makeup Geek. And we decided to meet up then. We hit it off really well and then stayed in touch after that. Mm. Um, She even had a picture of me and her hanging in her hallway at her house. So it's not like I was just this like random acquaintance. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, even though we 
we didn't see each other on a regular, regular basis because we live miles and miles away. Right. Um, there was still a friendship there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we decided to do a collaboration and worked on everything. And um, there was just, it became a really difficult process of getting email correspondence from her. So my team and myself would reach out, hey, we've got these samples. Did you try your your products do you like it what do you want changed just like the whole process everything was just very like took a long time so you wanted to give her like a lot of say in in the collab and Absolutely. allow her to have it was you know, a lot of feedback and give her opinions and pick the colors yeah. yeah pick the colors you pick the textures what do you want your box design to be like we wanted her to be happy with this project like we want this to be something you're proud of that you like genuinely love and want to do just you know we'll make we'll do everything on our end to make this happen we'll and this was like 2016, 20... The process started in 2015. 15, okay. Yeah, in 2015. Okay, okay so you'd known her a couple years at this point. Mm -hmm. And what was this supposed to be, an eyeshadow palette, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it okay. was a nine wall eyeshadow palette. And um, it became a battle to get the, the contract signed because we had a contract in place and it was like, oh, well, I just need to... It was trying to narrow down the date to get the launch happening. Mm -hmm. And she had other collaborations with other brands going on that time. I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, let's make something work. I can be flexible. I just, you know, I want this to work for everyone. I want everyone to be happy. Because there's something legal with that, right? Where brands don't want you obviously doing two launches at the same time. You have to space time. them out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you have an agreement with one brand, they want to say you have to wait X amount of months mm. before you okay. can launch another thing. So it's like, okay, well, sense. let's figure that out. Um, and so that date just kept getting pushed around and pushed around because she was launching like probably becca or it was yeah she had her becca collab and then a morphe. morphe collab that she was working on right, morphe right. one hadn't launched yet okay um so it's just trying to figure out a timing and such um and finally you know all the products were done she was happy with everything she got to pick like the names and everything i saw mm -hmm. like one of them was like her dog's name yeah, the, the like pictures you posted with Georgie the boxes and um mm -hmm. Frankie? Mm -hmm. Frankie, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she like was supposed to name the shades and stuff too, so. Was she really involved with the process of picking all the shades? Like, obviously she, but how involved was she? Was she, it, did you guys go back and forth on it a lot? Did she put a lot of time into it? Like, how much time did she invest into actually doing this? It was some, it wasn't as much as like what I saw Manny go through. Manny was very much, I want these colors. No, let's tweak this, like very hands-on. With her, it was like, oh, I want this shadow from another brand, but tweak it to make it a little bit more orange or something like that mm. and okay. so we would send samples and then i'd say okay do you have feedback do you want it darker lighter more shimmery what do you want and it would just be constantly pulling to try to get answers of like what changes do you want mm. so that should have been my first warning sign but never yeah. throughout the process was there any indication that she didn't want to go through the collab okay. it was just a timing issue thing how long does it take from the like from the time that you have an idea, like, okay, we want to collab and you guys agree to collab to launch something. Roughly how long is that time period? It usually, it takes at least a year. Okay. Um, sometimes close to two years. It depends on if it's something custom. Because it was eyeshadows, those aren't as difficult. It's not like you're dealing with, you know, a cream product that it can oxidize and this and that. Sure. Like eyeshadows are a little bit easier. Um, so you need at least a year because production alone, by the time you sign off on the R&D samples, is generally like at least three months hmm. um, and then packaging takes time it's like a whole process for everything to come together gotcha okay yeah so it was at least a year okay okay yeah hmm. um so in the end it came down i remember this conversation specifically it was with me and my coo and my coo was the one that was connecting with her and, and her mom on the project and he had asked me, he said, you know, we've, if this launch is going to happen because she didn't know what date, we didn't want it to become an issue of, well, she wanted this date. We couldn't pull it off because it takes time to get production going. So we didn't want the other extreme to happen where, you know, she wasn't happy that we couldn't get product in time to make that right. specific slot work. So I remember the conversation with my COO. We were on the phone. He was like, should we order the product or not? He was like, I'm still waiting for the contract and all of that. I was like, are all of the shades approved? Yeah, everything's approved like all the shades are ready to go is the packaging done everything was ready to go it was just a matter of pulling the trigger and ordering the product and i had made the decision that i very much regret now and everyone will remind me of that i didn't get the contract signed first but in my mind i was like oh we're friends like this uh, is not gonna wrong yeah. there's no yeah. way she would pull out of this there was right. no indication that she didn't want to do this um it's a huge financial opportunity we were going to pay very well for this project and i think a lot of people thought too like 
oh, she backed out because she got paid more by someone else. This was definitely not the case. Like this was a huge financial um, opportunity, like well over half a million dollars. Okay. That she would earn, not just what we would make. For us, our total was over four million. So there was was a lot a lot of money on the table. This wasn't, you know, like throwing chunk yeah. change around um but i told my coo i said well let's order it because if we don't and we you know she needs to pull this launch off and make it work for this time period we can't get the product in time that's going to mess things up too so let's just order it so we did and then it just constantly became like okay and i showed her the product was in house sent texted her pictures like hey your product's here look at you know are you yeah. excited like here's yeah. frankie and georgie colors we're waiting for the other ones to come in you know just like excited Still at this point, never had any indication that she wasn't ready to go with this project, was all excited for it to launch. And then um, there just became a lot of stalling. And this was several months after the product was sitting in our warehouse because we were willing to hold on to it for a long time. It was, I believe, eight or nine months that we had the product in our warehouse. Oh, my God. And at that point, it was just constant like, okay, we have to set a date. We need to tell us what's going on. And I was like, this product is sitting here. And it came down to um, this stuff is expired. And I told her, I was like, this is going to expire. So we have to get this launched. I need a yeah, date. Yeah. And she wouldn't commit to that and said that she didn't think this was going to work out. Why? She's too, she has too much on her plate. There's too, too much too on her. Oh, but what, did, what more did she have to, to do? I don't know. I, to this day, I'm like, is it? I, I, I mean, I have theories that I think because she was so focused on the Morphe collab because the Becca collab did not, her highlighter did really well once after that kind of, there was issues, but I think she was just all banking on Morphe. I don't know. Interesting. Do you think, yeah. I mean, did she already have her brand in the works at this point? At this point, she did. She was already, because she had told me even when we right. first met that right. she wanted to work on a line. I was like, oh, cool. Let me help you get you connected with some vendors because I, I generally wanted to help her because I, when I started my brand, I didn't have anyone to help me. I mm-hmm. literally had to call a bunch of labs. Like I remember my mom and I driving to Toronto. I was in Michigan at the time. We drove to Toronto because this lab would not see me. Went in person. I was like, I'm going to start a makeup brand. Like, please let me speak to the, someone. They kicked us out of the lab. Like basically, like it took wow. a oh lot. My God. It was a lot of work to like just find anyone that would actually believe me sure. mm-hmm. to start a brand. So I knew how hard it was to get a brand yeah. started from scratch, especially if you haven't done this before. This is a totally new world. So I was like, let me help her. And that's so amazing for you to do that mm-hmm. too, because a lot of people would see her as a competitor and not want right. to help another. Exactly. Yeah, because even my COO was like, you know, this is technically competition. I was like, yeah, but there's room for everyone. There honestly is. It's like you yeah. can bring a different thing to the table and it there's room for everyone. Yeah. But yep. if I see especially a woman that's wanting to start something for herself, I'm always going to support that um, because I'm a big believer in women, you know, having things that they're yeah. proud of to launch. That says so much about who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's such a shame that she took advantage of that. Yeah. So. So you had the product, you're like, hey, we need to launch this before it expires. And then when when was the final plug? When did she pull out? It was, I'm trying to remember the exact date. If it was the end of 2016, I don't, I'd have to look up the exact date. But, but it was several months after the product was in our warehouse. And she just came to you and was like. Yeah, we just emailed and I was like, I have to have a date. And then when I told her that I needed a date, like we couldn't wait on this any longer because I'm not going to sell expired product to, to customers. Yeah. Yeah. Like. You know, I don't, I, I want the quality to still be there. I can't just let this sit here. Right. Um, as soon as I was like, I need a date, that's when she was like, I don't think it's going to work. So did she tell you that over text? Email. Email. And were you like, what do you mean? Yeah, I was like, okay. Um, so now I didn't even know what to say to that, to be honest. Um, so I went back to my COO and I was like, okay, is there a way we can try to salvage this? Um, and we decided just to try to sell the product as singles. To, and not sell the palettes and just sell you the had singles. a ton of it. We had a million dollars worth of product between the packaging and the. the so eyeshadows. how many units is that roughly? Hundred thousand. Oh my units. god! Wow. Yeah, hundred thousand units. Like even last year when I announced Makeup Geeks closing, we still had the palettes. That's why for so many years everyone's like, "Oh, Makeup Geeks doing this boring stuff with the same palette. It's the one that's the same uh, as the Manny palette with like yeah. the." Yeah, when I was tired of looking at it, I'm like, I. You're I, like, listen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired of looking at these damn palettes. Like, I don't even want to see them anymore. I can imagine that customers don't, but I, I'm stuck. Like, I'm trying do? to salvage yeah. it. It's not like I have like billions just sitting in the bank sure. where I can just toss them. And be like, oh, let's do all new packaging. So we tried over the years, like 
we did the in the nude palette, a bunch of random colored palettes. Like we were just trying to switch it out and just use up that packaging because I don't, for one, environmentally, I don't want to toss it. And it's a huge financial investment to go into that. We were able to sell off um, some of the the single eyeshadows. We kept selling it until we felt that the expiry date was too yeah. risky and then tossed yeah. that we didn't sell. Uh-huh. Damn. So we were at least were able to recover some by selling them as singles. Okay. And just renamed them or relabeled them and just pushed them out that oh, way. Yeah. And the shadows were just such high quality and yeah. amazing. So at least, yeah, you were able to sell those. But mm-hmm. the, um, did people, did, did you guys have like a name for this palette? Uh, did it get that far where you like yeah, had designed just, packaging or yeah, anything? Yeah, we designed the packaging. Um, wow. So it was going to be like Makeup Geek by times Jacqueline Hill. It okay. was just going to be like her collab. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So wow, we so had pretty far down the road. Mm-hmm. Everything was done, like packaging, products, all done. How many units were you supposed to sell if you had a hundred thousand individual eyeshadows? What is that like? Uh, it would have been so times nine shades, nine hundred thousand shades. Oh, so you had nine hundred thousand shades, shades, yes, and a hundred thousand packaging. Whoa, yeah. So you were because a hundred thousand. I mean, that's a lot. I would assume, mm-hmm. and you yeah. guys were. I'm sure it would have done really well. Yeah. How to have launched. And you're paying mm-hmm. for all the space to store it to as store well. It. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah. And it's like she knows the industry. She didn't have her brand at this point yet. But, but still. But she still has the basic idea of how this stuff works. And mm-hmm. you're a friend to her. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, can we back up a little bit and go over all the ways that you helped her get her yeah. own brand going? Because that was before all of this, correct? Yeah, so she, um, so I remember we went on one trip to, to Napa, was one group trip we did. It was me, Manny, Jacqueline, Linda, the owner of Morphe Cosmetics, and another girl that was, I think, a PR person that was there. There was five of us. We went on a Napa trip, and the whole purpose of the trip was to work on their collaborations. Because Manny, I think, had done something with Morphe, too. Um, but anyways, we were, like, it was a cordial trip even though it was technically two competing brands it was like okay that's cool we're all doing collabs like there was no indication any time if she had a palette with morphe and a palette with makeup geek there'd be any issues like we're all together we're on the same trip hanging out together in napa and and what was that like over a couple of days yeah we were there for like three or four days i think wow yeah so we like i have pictures on my phone still (laughs) like oh my god um, um, so there, you know, was that kind of relationship and I, there was, it was cool. Like, Hey, we're all launching stuff. We're all cheering yeah. each other on there. I even have a picture of like, uh, love your squad or love our squad or something like that. We wrote on the chalkboard, like it was this kumbaya, like great moment, really mm. like at the high. And after that is when things just started to crumble. Um, but I had taken her from that trip to one of my vendors was flying into San Francisco and I said, hey, can you do me a favor? I've got a friend of mine that's trying to launch her own makeup brand. I know it's really hard to find good vendors. Can yeah. you meet with her if I take her to the San Francisco airport so she can talk to you about her lipstick? She, I knew she was going to launch lipsticks first. I saw her packaging. I gave her, like she showed me what her lipstick twos were looking like because she was already working on that. And I was like, okay, I, this lab has great lipstick formulas. You should meet my vendor. So pulled some strings and asked him to meet at the San Francisco airport. I drove her from Napa to San Francisco. I sat down with them and asked all the questions. I said, these are the types of things that you need to ask a vendor. Like, you know, what's your MLQ? What is your production timeline? What's an MLQ? MLQ, your minimum order quantity. Okay. So each lab has like, depending on the formula, do you have to order 5,000 per shade? Is it 10,000 per shade? Like, okay. Just different, like what quantities you have to order, like basically what your investment's going to be. Right. And I asked him to bring samples of lipsticks and all of that. The meeting went great. So she flew out from San Francisco, I think, to go back home. And after that, I had given her direct communication with labs and my representatives of different people that she could work with. And I said, hey, this lab is good at powders. This one's great at this. Like total inside information that no one shares. Like it is such high Especially when you're competing in theory. Yes. Like it's very high propriety. Like when you go to these manufacturers, like they will, they make sure they hide any vendor stuff. You can't talk about it. Like it's very hush hush. Like this is not, it's such a competitive cut through an industry. No one talks about this stuff. Okay. Wow. So. So you're doing a huge favor. I mean, yeah. really helping her out, <laughs> yeah. to say the least. 
Yeah, but it's like I really wanted to see her succeed. She's my friend. Yeah. I want to like see her do well. I knew she would do well. She was crazy talented at makeup, and I knew mm-hmm. that you know she would kill it. And I was I like even me personally as a consumer and as a friend, I was excited to buy her products because yeah. I was like yeah. you know I want to support her too. I've been yeah. watching her videos, even though I know her. I want right. to see her do well. Right. Um, and then after that, what what the hardest part was? It wasn't even the financial devastation that was so hard for me. It was the the level of friendship that was broken because the vendors I had set her up with and personally took her to, she took a competing rent. She took Linda from Morphe to all of those same labs that I had t- set her up with. Wow. Okay. And then I was kicked out of the picture. So I oh my like, God, so I like, don't even fully understand that part of it. I mean, it makes more sense now that you're like yeah. breaking it all down. Mm-hmm. But wow. After she that- really, Part of my language really fucked you over. Yeah, Part that was. Language. Oh, it gets better. I don't know why I said that on this show. Yeah, so we don't say cussing. fuck every other time. <laughs> on this show. I'm just trying to be yeah. yeah. respectful. But. That was the part, honestly, that hurt the most. It wasn't even the financial part. It was the like betrayal. Yeah, of taking it's someone, so shady. Yeah, like taking someone. It's. Can you guys grab tissues? Uh, sorry, I didn't think I was No, oh, don't <laughs> be sorry. Don't be sorry. We're getting this out. It's yeah. good. I know. <laughs> I told you. Podcasting is therapeutic. I know. It is. You're doing amazing. If you <laughs> want to take a break, we can. Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. Um, but I think it's... So what happened after that is after that Napa trip, everything just spiraled. She wasn't talking to me as much and things just kind of went downhill. And then I was like, that's when the little red flag started popping off. And I was like, okay, so are we actually friends? Or are you just using me to get information for your own brand? Right. So you started feeling that vibe. Oh, right, wow. right after that trip. So I wonder what it was. That made her just like something clicked in her where I wonder if someone pointed out to her like she, you know, she's your competitor. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like it must have been something like that. Like, like n- someone was now that air, you've like, got the you know, yeah. inside info, like you yeah. better take, take this it and, and run. run. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could be totally wrong. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's just my speculation. Yeah. But, yeah. God, that's messed up. Mm-hmm. I'm really sorry you had to go. That's, that's painful. Funny. Yeah. So it's just been a lot of like emotional processing. So a lot of people yeah. like. I tried not to talk about that or show that because it's like when you own a brand, everyone expects you to be like, okay, I'm the CEO. Oh, I have to be tough. I can't have emotions. Like, but at mm-hmm. the end of the day, I'm still a human being. Right. Like, yeah. Even though I'm a boss technically or own a company, it doesn't mean that they're still not feeling. Yeah, of course. of course. Yeah. So I think that was the hardest part. And then cool. after that, I remember I was in LA working at one of the manufacturers that I had told her about. And I knew she had posted on social that she was going to come to LA from Florida. And I was messaging her like, hey, girl, let's meet up. Let's get some coffee. Do you have time? Let's go to shopping. Let's do something fun. And she blew me off as like, oh, I don't have time. I'm I'm just, I'm really busy. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I was like, okay, well, let me know if you have time. Let's just meet for coffee. I'm not even joking. The afternoon that I text, I remember it specifically. It was a Monday. It was in the summer because it was right around the time that IMATS and all of that was going on. Yeah. I was at my lab and I was with my team members in the room working on products for Makeup Geek and my staff member comes running in. She went to the bathroom, came back and she was like, Jacqueline's here. I was like, Jacqueline who? She was like, Jacqueline Hill's here. And I was like, at this lab? I was like, what? She was like, yeah, her and um, Linda from Morphe are here. I was like, at this lab. And I looked out the window shortly after that and I saw them leaving, getting in like a Rolls Royce car. It was like a white Rolls Royce car. I saw the two of them leaving the lab together. And it was literally the time when she blew me off so she was too busy to have time to be with me. Oh my God. And she brought a competing, you know, technically a competing COO to manufacturers that I had set her up with. That is terrible. So how upsetting. Oh my God. That's when I was like, it. That's when it really hit me. Like this is pretty fucked up. Like this yeah, is not yeah. a friendship. That's when least. I knew that this is not a friendship. This is I was a stepping stone for you to get what you wanted, so you could build your brand. Did you tell her like, oh hey, just saw you get into your car by the way? I did didn't they see that, you. I didn't at that moment because yeah, did they know I, you were there? No, they didn't see because we were down at my rep's office is at the oh. end of the hallway, and they were in the conference room, which was down here. And and you had a relationship somewhat with Linda as well, mm-hmm. right? So not like a ton. We didn't really hang out, but we went on that Napa yeah. trip. This was not that far behind that yeah. time. Wow. So oh my god, that's when I was like, okay, this is pretty fucked up. And then after that, I just that it just the relationship obliterated pretty much after that because I knew what it was. This is not a friendship. This is yeah, you know, an Pure, opportunity. Just, yep, an opportunity. Yep. That's what hurt more than the financial. Even though the financial was devastating for my company. On a personal level, like who does that? Totally, if it's your friend. Yeah. Miss, so this is. I'm trying to understand the timeline. Right. This is when the collab was still happening, yes. and products is product in the warehouse yet. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Okay. So, so beyond, so you had that weird interaction, and mm-hmm. then product comes, and now you're like, okay, we need to sell this. We need to mm-hmm. launch this, and you're yeah, yeah. And she's in and, that moment. Did you start feeling like red flags? Like, is mm-hmm. this collab even going to happen? Yeah, I knew the collab wasn't going to happen. Really? Yeah. yeah. After that, and then I felt like such an idiot because. I know, like, I know a lot of people give me crap, like, well, she's not a smart businesswoman to have a contract. Like, I'm not stupid. I've had contracts with other people. Yeah. I just didn't think, I never thought the contract wouldn't get be signed because there was so much money on the table for her, too. This right. Was, yeah. Like, right. who turns down right. half a million dollars? No, that's so true. Like, if someone said, hey, I'm doing a collab, you can earn half a million dollars without even really honestly having to do anything at all. Just yeah. Put your sign name. a paper yeah. and just you know let us sell we're gonna sell it i make yeah. it Geek had its own social media we were gonna push it do everything you literally just have to sign a contract and just would she have been required to would she have to like make videos on it and stuff we didn't i don't even think we had in the contract a certain number of maybe Posts one i don't anything? remember okay. i have to look at the contract but it wasn't like this, a launch or something yeah it wasn't this hey you have to do x amount of stuff it's for uh for we were banking on they knew that if they had talked about it obviously mm-hmm. the more of it's gonna sell mm-hmm. Wow. So there wasn't this huge stipulation. It wasn't this big thing. It was like, we're going to do everything for you. Just do one lunch video. Just talk about it. We'll sell the rest. Like, this is easy money. So I never thought someone would turn that down. And then on top of it, the friendship thing. So in my mind, it's a no brainer. I'm like, okay, this is, there's no way someone would yeah. turn this away. That's why I'm in my mind, I'm just trying to think, why, why, why? <laughs> For so many reasons, like, first of all, it's easy money. Um, You work. It's just ethically bad. You're doing something with a friend. You're Mm -hmm. going to ruin a a relationship with someone in the industry. Mm -hmm. People could find out about. I mean, there's so many reasons. Your friend's brand. Yes. Like endless reasons. Why would she take all that risk and and do something so terrible? Mm -hmm. And I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking like it. I really think someone must have said something to her like you do realize you're collaborating with but don't, another influencer wouldn't brand. she already know that like duh well maybe she didn't that's really what, but that's see what, like, it that you way do. until that's... someone said it to her yeah because like in, unless there was another collab coming out that there was some contract they didn't they wanted her to sign i mean who, i mean who really knows it doesn't really matter i guess but mm-hmm. yeah it's just it's hard to wrap your mind around why she would make such a horrible decision like that and she's lucky that you you stayed quiet about it for so long mm-hmm. um because i knew i would get blowback yeah. Like, and it came, we, me and my COO and my team had a, a very deep conversation. Do we just sell this palette as is and just name it something else? But everyone already knew that her collab was coming out. Oh, and I, people knew. Yeah, they knew because oh, she was already wow. talking about it. People knew that she were, was talking about she it. She had talked about it and we had talked about it. So add that to the reasons of the list yeah. of why did you do this? Yeah. So did, did, did it ever get addressed by her? Like, oh, just kidding. It's not happening. Or did it just, kind of fizzle out and then people forgot about it essentially just fizzled it? out pretty much oh. yeah unbelievable so we were i mean looking back i should have just sold the <clears throat> palette and just renamed it as is but i didn't want there to be this legal battle of her trying to say oh i created this product with you guys or whatever even <sighs> there was nothing signed contract i just didn't or people I was, I figure it out it. and then it's like the the palette that wasn't yeah, right, you know, yeah. I just, right, right, right. Yeah, I just didn't honestly want to deal with it. So I was like, let's just sell it as singles. We'll figure out something else to do with the packaging. We can put mm. different boxes on it. We'll mm. figure something out. And, um, you know. So this was a massive hit to Makeup Geek. Yeah. I mean, so it was a million dollars worth of product purchased, but mm-hmm. you were supposed to be making Over like four million. Four million. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Your team must have just been like, what? the fuck yeah they were not how big was your team at the time uh 22 people damn so it's like you're affecting so many people Mm -hmm. that's terrible yeah so um one thing i did after that um try to do one other option we had was go back to manny and ask if he'd be willing on taking some of the shades because they had very similar tastes in the shadows Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was one option that came on the table too and um Manny was a sweetheart about taking some of the shades on. We're like, can you take like four shades and come up with five new ones and you can have a second palette? Um, And then what happened with that was we got a lot of blowback with Manny at that time because he was hanging out with like Jeffree Star and there was some drama around that. that. And so I was in a tough spot with that too because um, we had a ton of customers that came to the point where they were emailing my team customer service saying like, you know, if you do another palette... 
or you know you're supporting this person and there mm-hmm. was he was surrounded by drama like right. i like to yeah. this day i don't have issues with manny i think it was just the people he was hanging around with were very dramatic and uh i didn't want to get involved in heat with that so that collab didn't the second collab didn't work out we're like we'll just sell them as singles and not go through with that right right and that i think that hurt me and manny's relationship too which to this day he knows like i've po- apologized to him because i know that strained our relationship too because he was kind and saying that he would take that palette on Mm. Um, but I couldn't risk um, getting blowback from my customers on some yeah, drama sure. that was around yeah. him at that time. Was that like before drama get in one or yeah. around that time? It was when him and Patrick had broken up and he was hanging out with Jeffree Star. Oh, and yeah. It was like, okay. some, like Jeffrey had done some stuff. I don't remember all the details. <laughs> some stuff, million things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, around that time. And yeah, it was like, it really could damage your brand. Yeah. If, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously right. things have changed since then, but mm-hmm. at the time. Have you guys heard of Dipsy? Well, if you haven't, you need to because they have all types of oral pleasures to explore. Oral like your ears, not what you're thinking of. But actually, they have that too, if that's what you're into. Because Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. And they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Anything you're into, Dipsy has got. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. And what's great is Dipsy is super inclusive for straight and queer listeners, and 56% of stories are voiced by people of color. You ever wanted to hear a celebrity read you a sexy audio story? Well, now you can. Listen to stories voiced by ER Fightmaster and Luke Cook, and so much more. And new content is released every single week. So of course you can listen to your favorite stories again and again, but there is always going to be something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories that you can read. So let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsy stories.com slash sesh. So when's the last time you spoke to Jacqueline? It was right before Lipstick Gate happened. I had messaged her. Um, I pretty much told her that I was not agreeing with some of the stuff like the, the Morphe Vault palette, how they were like, oh, we relabeled it. You know, they basically relabeled it and said it was vegan now and put it back on the shelves. I was like, I just laid out a bunch of stuff with her and it was text message. It wasn't a phone call and just laid out stuff. I said that I was hurt from about the collaboration. I didn't agree with some of the stuff that was going on, the business decision she was making. And how far after she bailed on the collab was this? That was over two years later. Oh, wow. Okay. So you like, yeah, still Tried to keep a friendship with her mm-hmm. to some degree after. Yeah, she like I wasn't trying so to be friends with her. I think at that point, but I was at least trying yeah. to be cordial because in my yeah. mind, I'm like, okay, this is a shitty thing that happened, yeah. but she can't be a shitty person. Like sure. in my mind, I still wasn't thinking like she was this shitty person. I was like, okay, this is a shitty thing that happened, and I'm mm-hmm. still hurt by that. Yeah. Um, but I'm in my mind, I'm still trying to like redeem her in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was before Lipstick Gate had happened, and. I just laid a bunch of stuff out there and her response was, well, what do you want me to do about it, Marlena? There was no... What? Right? There was no remorse at all. I was expecting, like for me, I think what I was partly looking for was some sort of, okay, like I'm not going to be friends with you anymore, but at least have some sort of remorse. Like give me a little bit of closure so I can move on from this or whatever. Just just be up. Even like a, sorry, it didn't work out. Anything. Exactly. Nothing. There was no, it was constantly like blaming everyone else. This is not me. Like, what do you want me to do? There's just a very like victimized mindset. Not my problem. Mm -hmm. And so then after that, I was like, whatever. And then even in that same text message thread, she was saying about, I was trying to give her props where I could. I was like, oh, I noticed that you, you know, you had a giveaway at Christmas time for moms in need or whatever. And I told her, I like, I wasn't just coming at her, like trying to tell her negative things. I was like, I really, I saw that. That's a great, I love seeing that from you. I was like giving her positive too. And she said, oh yeah, I'm doing a charity work for something with kids in Africa or something like that. And I was like, oh, that's amazing to hear. I've never seen a single thing from that happen. Yeah, I was, was going to say, say don't I don't remember, remember that. that at all. Never seen a single thing happen. I don't know 
what's going on if that's what lipstick and lions is i don't i don't know i just what's I don't lipstick know. lipstick and lions she has like some sort of nonprofit. it's all over internet that's registered under her name lipstick i don't know that lions? lions and lipsticks was something she trademarked that was like a hmm. either, lions and lipstick yeah eight? you'll have to research it is a charitable organization headquartered in tampa florida mm-hmm. oh interesting like jacqueline Mm-hmm. But okay. she's never talked about that anywhere. Mm-mm. What? I mean, and if you had something like that going, why wouldn't you take the opportunity to? Yeah. To, I mean, she's never really seemed to fundraise for anything. Mm-mm. No, I haven't seen anything. Wow. Because I was excited. I was giving her props for it. Like, yeah. oh, that's really yeah, that's cool. Great. Like, you know, I was going to keep my eyes out for it. Like, love to support that or whatever. So even at that point, even though I had been burnt and hurt, I'm still like, okay, these things I see are good. But like after that, never saw anything with that happen. Mm. And that was my final, final whatever. And then lipstick gate happened and I was going to keep quiet about it for a while. But then it was when I saw her just get on camera and just blatantly lie about it and not even address it. And knowing people were putting what I knew was contaminated lipsticks on their lips <clears throat> and not even trying to prevent that. Like that's when I, I became really vocal about lipstick gate. And I think some people got upset that I was vocal, but it lo- I don't care. Like right. this is actual, like I know what production's like. I worked with these labs. I knew what lab do this project. I had issues with that lab too. I told her about that in that text message. I had told her, don't work with this lab. I had issues with them. Like she was warned and still moved on with them anyways. Because it's the, it was like a cheaper option probably. They're less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So lipstick eight for those who don't know, this was 2018, 19 maybe. I think it was 18 or 19. I think it was 19 actually yeah i think it launched so, in 19. Yeah. basically that was the launch of jacqueline hill cosmetics mm-hmm. jacqueline cosmetics yeah jacqueline cosmetics okay that was her first product, product. that she had launched yeah yep. july july of 19 mm-hmm. it was yep. a huge amount of lipsticks too like a big vault all mm-hmm. these different shades every like nude shade that was the whole oh, thing right. it was like all the all, nudes. every nude shade. like a nude for someone you know any person will find mm-hmm. their favorite nude mm-hmm. like the concept was really cool yeah, like smart. i was excited to see it come out i'm like okay she you know yeah finally came out with her line she's been talking about it for many many years yeah. and so you're still kind of rooting for her at this yeah. point you know because like again it's an, a woman in business and yeah. i was excited to see the lipsticks and was yeah. just gonna see like what happened with it and if they got good reviews and stuff i would have considered buying some so people started getting these things <laughs> and they had like fucking rocks in there rocks well like lipstick rocks the little balls <laughs> yeah little yeah. balls fuzzy hairs fuzzies yeah animal hair Mm-hmm. Um and there were several excuses made for it. I, mean, I remember were, that era so it was well. I remember time. like watching the video and then mm-hmm. watching everyone's reaction videos and just being like, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. Yep, Rob Beauty Christie. <laughs> yep, came out got with the whole the Rob Science Christie. Yes. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Science, yeah, you know? well, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a crazy it was era a wild there. Time. It was it was interesting okay. on the other side to just watch mm-hmm. it unfold. Yeah. But you, on the other hand, you I knew was, I was living once was I happening. saw it all happening because wow. I it took me a minute to figure out who the lab was because I'd introduced her to a few. Um, but then I saw the pictures on her website and I recognized the lab and I was like, <clears throat> oh. oh, she took pictures like with the science goggles. Yeah, to... with the science goggles. And I recognized the background. I knew what lab that was. And that's oh. when I knew I was like, like oh, mm-hmm. told you not to do it. And yep. look what happened. Yep. I was like, I know where this shit was made. And then I had another rep at the other lab that turned down her lipsticks because it was a rush job. Mm-hmm. They had told me too that, yeah, she came to us. It was the same rep that I took her to in San Francisco. She had took uh, her other buddy CEO and was going to make them at that lab. And they said no, because they wanted them done in eight, eight weeks time. That's physically impossible. That's crazy. From scratch. It takes at least six weeks to procure raw material materials. You can't do a new product in eight weeks time. Do right. you think part of the reason why they were so fucked up was because they were rushed? Yes. Okay. I think it was because it was rushed. Cause I mean, these things have like dents in them too. Yeah, like to this day, I've never scratches. seen the little. I don't know what the little balls are. To be honest, I, I have no idea if anyone figured remember, out what it was. I think they people were speculating that it was like, like they got too hot and they kind of they like pilled up. Yeah, or like mm-hmm. a part of it separated in like well, transit or something. Yeah, because I don't think they were actually. I mean, they weren't actual rocks, but um, yeah, they were like <laughs> that was her, little clumps in there. Yeah. That was Jacqueline's um, yeah, or Jacqueline Cosmetics. That was their tweet. In rare circumstances, some lipsticks were exposed to high temperatures or the raw materials were not blended thoroughly. And this is not acceptable, acceptable to us. As of now, we are seeing less than 0.1% with issues. Ah. 
Less than 0.1%. But like everyone that had them had issues with them. I didn't see any good ones. Less than 1%? Point, less, point less than 0.1%. 0.1%. 0.1%. Plus that were affected. Yeah. Oh, and that was from Jacqueline Cosmetics. Yeah. Yes. So this is directly from them. Them saying that it was high temperature. High temperature. Right, right, right. Circumstances. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hmm, Fuzzy okay. gloves, baby. Okay. Can we get some pictures up of the lipsticks, actually? I want to remember. Yes. Okay, there we go. There's the fuzz. This is Rob Beauty Christie. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. Oh, go to the, yeah, go to the other one. Because I will say there can be some where you <laughs> have... There's a ball yeah, in there. No, that's not normal. Yeah. That looks like after you've had a lipstick for like three years. Totally. And you put it on after you ate a... <laughs> yeah. a like a... To- piece of toast. Yeah, <laughs> well, you put it on the toast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. crazy. And then they tried to be like, no, this was just a, a small percentage of people, but yeah, but when everyone else's is fine. Yeah, it's like, and as a brand owner, as we found out later, whatever, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> but even as a someone with your name on these products, like if you see that many people complaining, wouldn't you like, like do crisis management, right? Like, yeah, give refunds or whatever. Right. Don't let it just keep boiling over because then more people yeah. are now are going to like bring attention to it. That's not a way to handle it. So exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a crazy time. Yeah. Because I remember seeing that from Christy. And I think at this point, I think I'd still kept my mouth shut because I was like, OK, I'm just going to see how this yeah. plays out or whatever. But then when she got on on camera and it said the, the fuzzy it was fuzzy gloves. Yes. Why? That's when I lost my shit. I was like, this is this is some bullshit. This is the fakest story I've ever heard in my life. And I wanted to say something because consumers don't know what the process is. They exactly. don't, they aren't right. here in production line knowing how lipsticks are made. So mm-hmm. in their mind, they could believe it and be like, oh, these are safe to use. It's just fuzzy gloves or whatever. So that's when I was like, no, 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 this is not normal. That is not how production is. And just kind of warning people like, don't put this shit on your lips. It's contaminated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. it was uh, Cassandra Bankson that, did the she actually got them tested or like oh yeah I remember that whole and, thing and yep. she, that's where she found the animal hairs yep. and she you know like looked at the lab and they've been known to possibly have animals running around which is wild yeah that's wild huh? in a lab what yeah in the, the lab um, the dogs were actually making the lips but it was the- <laughs> <laughs> puts a, a new image. term new meaning to animal testing yeah like, <laughs> yeah seriously God. Um, so yeah, she said the fuzzy gloves and I remember, remember all the like memes people were like posting pictures of like winter <laughs> fuzzy gloves, like thinking, you know, cause is that something that they actually use like soft gloves to handle the, the stainless steel part of it or no? Maybe if they're doing the external packaging, right. I have never, I mean, I've to, like seen... not smudge. That's kind of what I was, that's what, what I imagined. Mean, like, just like, felt, or, I, don't, or, I don't even know. I've never seen, I mean, I've watched production lines in various yeah, labs. Yeah. Like I've gone in there, toured the places. Yeah. I've never once in my entire life have seen a fuzzy glove of any kind. And, and if they even do, if they did, what they're not going to touch the actual they're product. Not, with it's gloves. already sealed up. If you're going to have any sort of <laughs> glove like that, it's not, the product is, it's going to be external packaging. Right. It's yeah. not going to be. And it's not like it was even just, a, which would have been bad still, just a random hair here and there. I mean, that thing was fuzzy. Yeah. No, like it had a fur coat on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. And then for them to try to back that up and, yeah. and say, oh, yeah. It's all yeah. it's all good people. It's all good people. This is just zero point one percent. Correct me yes. if I'm wrong, though. In her video, she's like, "These are 100 percent safe to use. Like you can." She did no oh, problem. She said the FDA regulation. Now, oh, you remember that the documentation that had like parts of it blacked out. It said like, "Oh, it's yes, F- coming back oh, to me now." Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's another mm-hmm. thing. Maybe this happens with other brands. I've worked with that specific lab and a ton of others like all over the world. I've never once seen any sort of paperwork with FDA regulations. That's I was going to say, that's not a required thing. No. That's not a brand required thing. If it's an FDA thing, it's on ingredients. That's through the manufacturer. But I've never once seen a makeup brand itself have some sort of documentation around FDA, unless maybe it's like with sunscreen or active materials and things like that. But I've, me personally, I've never come across that. Are you speculating she made, she like doctored that up? Oh, we, it's already been proven it was doctored up. So she just. Yeah, because the dates don't match up with the court documents that said the dates of when all of this stuff actually happened. The dates on those documents don't even match up. She just cooked that shit up. She's like, yo, get on Canva and cook some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Unbelievable. I don't know if it's from another project that Morphe had did or what. I, I don't know. I, I have no, I, I can only speculate on that piece, but I'm just saying from me working with product development with multiple labs, I've never filled out that paperwork. I know you won't say this because you are 
so classy and lovely, but I'm going to say it. Because <laughs> we like, are not. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, I feel like there was a bit of karma in action during all of this for everything that she had done prior to it. I mean, and when you try to cut costs and just you get greedy, mm-hmm. this is what you get. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, didn't she have like several launches too after that that didn't go perfect? Not as bad as this, but I remember it was rough. It was rough for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe so. I mean, I don't Mm -hmm. remember exactly, but it does seem like there's always been some issues. But at the end of the day, she's she's done incredibly well. She's still very popular. Um, You know, she just had a a huge, beautiful wedding and Mm kind of getting that fairy tale ending. And I mean, it's it's it would be painful to me yeah. if I were in your position, knowing everything that I I did and all the behind the scenes stuff and the way this, that she's hurt you and others. Mm-hmm. Right. And to see someone just continue to, you know, succeed and uh, and it's you know it's one thing to own your shit and be like, yeah, I fucked up. And then you know right. I believe in second chances. I'm yeah. sure you do too. Yeah, and like, like we've all fucked up. Like I've sure, fucked up. Sure. Like, I've- not been perfect with anything I've done with my brand or whatever, but it's a matter of like saying, hey, yeah, that was fucked up. Let me try to fix that and right, do better. Yeah, and do but better. I'm not seeing that at all. There's no, no improvement. There's no accountability taking taken. accountability for anything. I mean, at the end of the day, if you own a brand, you are the the buck stops with you. So no matter what happens, like at the end of the day, that's still your company mm-hmm. that you have to like vouch for. Like Yeah. Right. There has to be accountability of some sort. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by one of my favorite sponsors, Mind Bloom. Now, I have been very open about how ketamine therapy was the key, the solution for me. I had debilitating anxiety and depression for a very long time, and I got desperate, didn't know what to do. Josh started doing some research, and that's how he found ketamine therapy. And wow, you guys, it changed my life. I think everyone in my life can agree that I am a different person post-ketamine therapy. Ketamine therapy is a newer tool. It's becoming more popular that improves your mental health. And now you can get at-home ketamine therapy with MindBloom. MindBloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. And unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 MindBloom clients, 89% of people reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. I really can't recommend ketamine therapy enough. Like I said, it was very impactful for me in a huge way. And I love knowing that if I ever start struggling again with my mental health, it's always there for me. And I would love to try it at home the next time that I feel like I need it. Right now, MindBloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash sesh and use promo code sesh. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with MindBloom. mindbloom.com slash sesh. Use promo code sesh. Okay, so the last time you guys talked, we decided, which was 2017, somewhere around I think there. it was 2017. I have to look at text, but it was 2017. Before maybe? Lipstick Gate. Before Lipstick Gate. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, so, th- and you guys have had zero communication since. No, because she's blocked me on everything. Blocked you on everything. Yeah, because after I was vocal about Lipstick Gate, I went to someone had tweet like tagged me on one of her tweets or whatever, and it shows you know like the can't do yeah. this tweet or whatever. Oh yeah. So then I clicked on it and I saw it was blocked, and then I was blocked on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I blocked on. Everything. Wow. I want to be blocked. <laughs> I want to be blocked. <laughs> I love a good block. <laughs> me too. It's kind of funny. Yeah, so far right now, I'm just blocked from Jacqueline and Janice Chamio. <laughs> that's Janice Chamio. Oh, she was just okay. telling us that's, yeah. that's the name for her. It was so funny. She brought up Janice Chamio when we were at brunch, and we're sitting there, we're like, we're like wait, who's who Janice? Janice? We were like, oh my God, I thought I knew everyone. Who is Janice? Janice. Who is, is Janice? Yes. Who is Janice? <laughs> James Charles. Jean Charles, as we Jean say here on the show. Charles. <laughs> Mr. Jams. Um, <sighs> yeah, so should we get into some of the the jam stuff sure Janice. The Janice stuff. i'm here i have water maybe. cool oh, wait, wait you didn't come up with janice no the was, internet did was, the internet did okay because i think the signatron his palette like they couldn't read it and it it read we just janice pulled it up it very much does 
I Janice think does read it, it that. The internet did. I was just repeating what they were it saying. It very much That's reads hilarious. as Janice Champion. Why did we think of that? It's honestly That's amazing. fucking brutal. <laughs> Janice. So, oh, Janice. <laughs> I yep. mean, well, before we go on to, to Janice, is, mm-hmm. is, there, what, is there anything else we want to say about Jacqueline? Yeah. I want to make sure we don't skip over anything. Yeah, if there's anything you haven't talked about that you want to or i think for me i think just the f- most fucked up thing that really set me off to be vocal about all of this was honestly seeing the kaylin thing and yeah. um, like for me personally i'm gonna support her kaylin's brand as much as i can when she launches i think she's trying to work on something yep. new just to show support to her because i know she's been through the ringer too mm-hmm. um but for jacqueline to get on camera i think what really set me off was not only her stealing the cozy brand but then doing a video and mocking the whole trademark thing, like yes. doing a video with a brush and be like, oh, at least it's trademark. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not funny. This is someone's livelihood. That's a yeah. that's like mean girl vibes. To me. Oh, totally. Huge mean like, girl that's vibes. That's just, that pissed me off more than anything. That's when I was like, you know yeah, what? Time for me to go. speak up. Let's, let's go. go. I, I don't give a You're fuck like, anymore. Oh, where's that fuck up. to give? It's not here. Not here. <laughs> I have zero left. Yeah, that was, that was so mean. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh, especially someone who's, you know, smaller than you and yeah. another woman to just like stomp on someone totally. like that. That's what really pushed me over the edge with Jacqueline. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't know all of this stuff with you leading up to this. And like, mm-hmm. obviously, the, I had my own reasons to like not be a super big fan of Jacqueline, but I was mm-hmm. never like angry or thinking she was yeah. like a bad person. But mm-hmm. when all of that happened, I was like, this is fucked up. Like yeah. more people need to talk yes. about this. Yes. What happened to Kaylin was seriously messed up. I know Kaylin um, has watched the show before. Mm-hmm. If you're out there. Hey. You're amazing. Yeah. And I'm sorry She's for everything that you've been through and all the backlash of, you know, people that were like, well, she should have, you know, trademarked it and blah, blah, blah. And everything's hindsight. Like, okay, it's easy to say, to say that now. I that too for everyone talking about that because I have trademarked a lot of businesses, have done a lot of stuff. Like, it is expensive, especially if you were a small yes. brand owner to trademark mm-hmm. stuff. Point. You have to pay a retainer for a lawyer. And it used to be like three or 5,000. Sometimes these business lawyers want a $10,000 re- retainer. I believe it. Who is going to have that kind of money when you're first starting yeah. off when you are trying to invest on product development and marketing right. and packaging and like branding and website? There's so many expenses that come into building a brand from the ground up. A lot of people, it's not because they're stupid and don't want to trade market because they don't have the funds. It's either, am I going to sell these products or yeah. am I going to spend all of my savings? You're starting on, out. You're starting out until you get that revenue in. It doesn't make sense to trademark something until right. it's up and running. You don't so know if it's actually going to take off yeah. or not. I mean, so when I see people like giving Kaylin shit about, oh, she should have trademarked it. Like, who, no, like that yeah. does not, that's not a dumb business decision. That's a like a, a critical decision of financially. Can you afford to even do that? Right. So do you think that Jacqueline was aware of this brand going oh, into totally. it there's okay. no way you couldn't because yeah, that's what we've always said too if she is if Jacqueline's claiming that she trademarked a brand the first thing that you do is you have a lawyer or yourself you research it you go to test it's a government web- website that you can look a trademark search like I do this for every so brand I'm starting step one get on your phone and do a quick google search literally search anything which we have do. done yes. when we have I, random ideas yes. like yeah. google, google that see if that's a thing yep. already yeah mm-hmm. it, it's you have like your Google fingers are not broken. You couldn't yeah. just search that there was already a cozy existing. Yeah. And, and even then, if we give her the benefit of the doubt and think, oh, she really didn't know. At some point in the process, you, you know. knew and yes. you kept going. And kept going. Be like, oh, because there was oh, enough well. people being vocal and saying, hey, this other girl. And and Kaylin said that she reached out to Jacqueline on her socials yes, and was she posting did. to her, telling her, mm-hmm. I have this brand name. Right. Please don't use this. Yep. So sh- there's you no know. way that Because they she- started posting before they did like a real big launch mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is so messed up. Because like I'm sure in her mind or whoever on who's ever on her team oh, behind all of me. this. I'm just going to steamroll right over. Right. Like it doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. I can take this. It's a great idea. Yeah. It's a great name. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's- and then to go sell these like extremely expensive blankets that's always been our big beef too it's like this is not barefoot dreams (laughs) yeah yeah legit you can find them on alibaba for ten dollars yeah the same blanket same ones yeah so she what you can find those blankets literally on alibaba it's very common for businesses to go on alibaba and find stuff to resell oh and i do i know that my god it's a family-owned business i do not (laughs) family owned (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah that well, Jacqueline Marks and like started as a family owned business. Yeah. yeah. And then we found out Morphe was actually mm-hmm. behind it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Linda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That didn't surprise me. I'm learning me the at names. Linda. Linda. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. God. Okay. We can take a be- deep breath. 
cleanse ourselves of the Jacqueline energy <laughs> and move on to Janice. <laughs> yeah. Move on to Janice. <laughs> Oh God! You're joking. Sorry, I just looked it up, and a bundle of her blankets, two blankets, a hundred and forty dollars mm-hmm. for ten dollars on Alibaba. Mm-hmm. That's yep. but that's just oh, one. That, so oh, that's one. One oh, is one forty. That's, that's one. Sorry, that is that's one, how much she's one charging. One forty. Yeah, for, for one blanket. blanket. Sorry, I thought it was a a bundle. It's not. It's what is this website imminent? This is her. This is where all like, of her stuff is at. Yeah. Oh, which. Oh, cozy. And Jack the jewelry, Markson. you can also, like, people all over Reddit forums have found the exact jewelry. She keeps saying that she designed them. They're literally on AliExpress and Alibaba. Dude. Like, people that's have terrible. found the exact same design. She keeps saying, oh, I designed Damn, these. Damn, she must be making hella money, though. Oh, yeah. If the she's markup bought- is huge. Yeah. The markup is huge. Yeah, that's wild. That's insane. Yeah. And wasn't the whole thing with that brand, too, they were, like, nickel-free, not going to, like, change your skin green stuff and they mm-hmm. still were changing people's skin green oh that was like one of the first yeah this this was like probably a year or so when it first mm. launched allegedly that it was yeah not the greatest quality or not the quality that it was said to be yeah my opinions on Jacqueline have definitely changed a lot over the years it makes me at the end of the day it like makes me sad I know mm. people are always going to come for my throat and be like oh you're trying to bash another women or whatever I know. it makes me sad because the person that I met well over 10 years you know about 10 years ago is not the same person that was your friend it. yeah like i don't even know what happened it like part of me is angry but the other part of me is just really sad like how do you get yeah. to that point where you just don't care yeah. about how you do business that you'll do anything for a dollar like that's what makes me sad yeah that's super fun like up. there's way to be there's so many ways to be successful without steamrolling over yeah. others or doing shady minutes yeah shit. like she has every ability to right. be successful have, and like you said she has the talent you mm-hmm. have the resources yep. you have mm-hmm. the finances to do something yeah. so amazing and that's what i was expecting from her brand to be this amazing thing because she has the resources right and it seems like so it. much of it is just rushed all these brands mm-hmm. are rushed and that's why these yeah. these little things slip through the cracks mm-hmm. and she doesn't think it through before she just goes and does it and mm-hmm. trying to capitalize as much as she can with with her time and she has the money to hire like a full executive team to to, like run it all she'd have to do is just you know do the part that she loves like design it or whatever but no that's why there's such a bigger issue here too i don't think people fully understand that it's not just like gossiping it's i mean this is like this is someone who has continually stolen from stomped Mm on um i mean Makeup Geek was hugely affected by mm-hmm. that. Do you think without that happening, you still would have cl- closed the brand? I don't know. I ask myself that sometimes. Part of me says yes and no, because there was a lot of other things that happened that year, too, right. that were financially devastating. It was definitely a piece of the puzzle. Okay. To say that. Like, you know, yeah. I can't say for sure. I mean, in the end, COVID was the final nail in the coffin, but I don't know. To yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm really sorry that you went through that. Yeah. yeah. That's just so unfair. And, and, you know, it's one thing to go through it with just someone that you meet a business partner, but it's another thing to go through it with someone yeah. who you considered your friend and mm-hmm. who, you know, at one point you guys were really close and you helped her and you wanted the best for her. And mm-hmm. and you've helped a lot of people over the years in the industry. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's really amazing. You should feel really good about that. Mm-hmm. But that sucks that after all of that, you know, your own brand suffered, suffered. so much at the hands of others. Mm-hmm. And right. that's just, yeah, yeah, extremely unfortunate and yeah. sad. I try not to like get too bitter about it or hung up on it and just like I was for a while, I was, you know, feeling sorry for myself about everything. But then I have to look back and I, I try to have the mindset of, okay, what all did I learn from all this? Like, mm-hmm. even though it was mm-hmm. really shitty to happen, like, I learned, you know, for sure, I'm never, no matter who it is, always get a contract signed first. I learned like, what to look for in people if like shady behaviors and toxic things like I've I learned a lot along the way so I try to always focus on that so I'm not like you know yeah. not getting overwhelmed by everything that happened to just be like okay I can build something new um and do it better and be smart and all of that because I went through so much and learned a lot along the way that it'll help me be better in the future so it's a great way to look at it have you ever been stewing about a health problem for so long and you start texting your friends about it and they're trying to give you advice, you start Googling it, you start going on TikTok, and before you know it, you're down a rabbit hole, but really you don't actually know what's wrong and what would be best is to go see a doctor. 
but you don't know how to find the right doctor or one that takes your insurance or one that has actual time to see you. Well, that is where ZocDoc comes in. There is nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to be the center of attention and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. With ZocDoc, you can choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. And what's great is their app is totally free to use and millions of people already rely on it. And you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. I seriously love ZocDoc. I have used it several times in the past year. It's so convenient. I've even turned my fiance onto it. He loves it. He was able to go find a new PCP and he had a great experience with them. It was super easy to use as well. So I highly recommend ZocDoc. So go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash sesh. ZocDoc.com slash sesh. So coming out about this, you've also, you know, been vocal about other people that have hurt you in the industry and you're kind of just like finally getting all of this out mm -hmm. and a lot of people did see this play out mm -hmm. um but moving on to janice janice mm -hmm. can you explain kind of what happened so you met janice a long time ago <laughs> yes. um i met him in 2016 my first event meeting him was i had makeup geek had a lipstick event it was to launch our lipsticks and um a bunch of influencers came and I think Patrick had brought him because at that time I didn't know who he was. Who Patrick was. Star. Yeah, Patrick Star. And um, I was standing there getting pictures of people and socializing and all that. And Patrick came up to me and said, hey, I want you to meet my friend. Um, his name is James. He just, you know, um, he was on the Ellen show and this and that. And he was just talking about him. I was like, oh, OK, cool. I literally yeah. had no idea who he was. I hadn't seen his videos yet or anything. And we met, took a picture together. And he just seems like this kind of, you know. Slightly geeky teenager mm -hmm. who was getting into makeup. And I was like, oh, okay. he was so cute. He was so he was. cute. Yeah, yeah. He had his glasses and everything. And I'd wished him well and said, I, you know, I hope you're successful, whatever you do. You know, really nice to meet you. And that was pretty much it. So he got really popular because of a yearbook photo that where he was wearing makeup in the yearbook. Mm -hmm. And then he got on Ellen. That's mm -hmm. kind of what seemed to have launched him. I mean, I definitely am not an expert on the the yeah, whole so. beauty scene, but that's what I gathered. Yeah. I would also say back then in the in those years, it was a lot more rare for men to oh, be in the yeah. beauty community on YouTube. And Definitely. it was actually quite cool. I remember being like, this is awesome yeah, that this too. guy is out there, you know, doing this and being one of the first to really like gain popularity and gain traction and have these really cool opportunities and he's super talented and mm. I mean, I liked him for a long time. Yeah, I did too. I thought he was I did cute. Too. And... Like I started watching his videos like as he started taking off. I was like, oh, he's really oh. creative. And, you know, his videos are really entertaining yeah. and all of that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was another one that I was cheering on for a long time. I never interacted with him much after that. I just knew of him sure. because of the community or whatever. So he did. Every, he like worked with CoverGirl. That was like the first brand he worked mm -hmm. with. And then it came out later on that that photo that he got really famous for had been edited mm -hmm. af after effects, at least. I, I'm not sure if he was not wearing makeup at all in the original photo, but mm -hmm. it at least enhanced it, mm -hmm. um, had uh, added highlighter and stuff. So that was kind of like his first her scandal. scandal. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So obviously he was excited to meet you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he was kind of like starstruck or anything when you first met him? I don't know because he he was just really shy and really quiet. So I mm -hmm. don't know. He was Patrick just came over and introduced him and I was like, oh, nice to meet seemed you. Nice, he just seemed like a normal, like low key teen. And, yeah. You know, was yeah. in, getting into the beauty space. So because mm -hmm. he had to be like, what, 16 then or something? Yeah. He, he was, was like, oh, yeah, I think he was 17, 16. 17, 17, 17, 17. He was 17, 17 when he became when he became cover girl. Cover. Yeah. And then he blew up, blew up, mm -hmm. blew up. Started doing yeah. concerts at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Um. So, can you explain what happened? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My Gucci shoes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We're a shit show over here. But um. So he became very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And did you stay in touch with him over the years? 
No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't have his number or anything. I just knew all of the other people that in the okay. space. So yeah, I knew it. like of him or if we'd you know, see each other in passing, but I was not One connection directly away in thing. contact with him. No. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So then you released a video called Dear Influencer, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And what was, can you explain to people kind of what the gist of that was? Yeah. So the first video I did, I don't remember the exact title of it. It was like speaking my truth or something like that. Cause I had seen a lot of bullshittery that was happening in the, <laughs> love in the that term <laughs> <laughs> that I was not happy seeing. Cause I've been in the industry since 2008. I've been around for a long time. Like this is not my first rodeo in the space. And I just saw a lot of like sponsorships not being done and people were getting upset with me. Like, why are you not like sponsoring influencers, this and that? I was like, I would love to, like, I've always been supportive of new creators. Like that's why we created the affiliate program with Makeup Geek. It was the first brand to ever have affiliate marketing where people could earn money. Like I'm all about supporting the community that I'm part of. Right, right. But I was just blunt and I just laid it out there. Like the fees I'm seeing are just beyond what I can afford. The ROI is not there. This just mm -hmm. like, this is just facts. It's not yeah. an enjoyable fact that some people want to hear, but this is factual thing. So posted a video on that, just kind of getting things off my chest because I had a lot of, you know, pushback from people saying, why aren't you doing this or that? And then after that, I had done an in Dear Influencer video just to talk about the influencer space, things that I saw that I did not like, like sponsorships not being disclosed. Yes. And then I also took the opportunity at the end of the video to thank the people who helped me build my company. I was very, I named each person by name, like, thank you, Manny, thank you, Patrick, Kathleen. Like, I went through and just said, hey, thank you. So it was just kind of a lot of things all in one in that Dear Influencer video. But it blew up because I had thrown out. I don't know why people focused on the number, but I was like, I can't pay sixty thousand dollars for one video, which I genuinely could not. I remember this now more yeah. clearly. Yeah. So I had the media picked it up, and everyone was freaking out because they didn't know how how high the rates were going yeah. at that time. Yeah. In my mind, I wasn't even really focusing on that. My point was, is I want to support the creators in the space, but I cannot pay multiple people These five rates. or even six figures for one video. I just, I can't, I'm not, I'm not L'Oreal. I'm not Estee yeah. Lauder. Mm -hmm. And so I just had sp spoken out about that. And it's a lot of people got pissed that I had said that because now everyone was upset. Like, this is what people are charging. And yeah. you know, it became transparent now that there was a loss of inauthenticity with yeah. mm. influencers, with the people watching their videos. Um, so that, got a lot of media traction and all that. And I know James Charles took it very personally and got on camera, I think with Tati and was like basically trying to validate his reason for wanting to charge five or six figures. Oh, right. And saying, yeah. oh, it's because of, you know, it's because if you got an ad campaign with whatever, which first off, if you're doing an ad, there's, first off, brands do not do ad campaigns on TV. Like the only ones you'll see are like the drugstore ones, yeah. Revlon and Right, that. right. I've never seen an ad on TV for Urban Decay, for mm -hmm. NARS, no. for mm -hmm. Mac, never once, because they they know it's expensive to do that. So why are you comparing influencers to something? It's yeah. like comparing apples and oranges. Yep. It's not- Totally different. It's totally different comparison. And outside of that, the whole point is, it's up to a brand to decide like if that money is worth that or not right. for one video. If they feel like they're going to get the sales from that, they're happy to pay it, then good. Everything's yeah. all good in the world. I'm just saying, I can't, I'm not going to see the return on that. Yeah. He got all pissy about that, did a video trying to to attack me on that because he knew like hit dogs holler the loudest. He was filling hit and wanted to holler the loudest about it because he yeah. knew I was talking about him partly mm -hmm. with not disclosing sponsorships and all of that and lying to his fan base about, oh, this is his favorite product. I'm like, dude, I've seen those same promotions come in my inbox for that same product. This is not, you love this. You got paid to talk about it. Like, let's be yep. real. Let's stop talking shit. <laughs> yep. And I mean, I was only in the beauty space for a small amount of time, but even now in, I still get emails from all types of brands and I'll mm -hmm. see the stuff that comes in and then I see people promoting it. I'm like, oh, interesting. Yeah. You didn't just find that product and you're just right. wanting to talk about it. Yes. You, love it so much. Yes. You got hit up by the yeah. same brand that I did yeah. and you took it mm -hmm. and you're not disclosing it. Yeah. Which now I feel like it's harder to get away with something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it still the happens. Issue would, but... It wouldn't be such a big deal if they would just disclose it like, hey, so-and-so sponsored my video today. Thank you. Like every other industry does that. Like, right. Mm -hmm. I've never understood know? why, yeah, specifically influencers are so hesitant, or at least they were until recently, to disclose things. I mean. Yeah. The audience is smart. They're right. Know. Exactly. Just be yeah. open with them and let them know if they decide and not to And it's not a big it. deal. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know? Just be they, honest. You got to make money somehow. Right. I, yeah. I want everyone to earn their coin. Like, right. 
got to take sponsorships and all of that. That's all great and fine. Just mm-hmm. don't lie about it. Totally. Exactly. You know? yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I was I must have been hit a nerve with James trials because then after that, Netflix invited me to do a documentary with them called Broken, which is out. You yes. can still see it. It is out. And Marlene is in it. <laughs> it's a really good documentary, actually. I'm going to go home and watch it. Um, but they d- had a whole filming day, flew me into L.A. We met up, was filming with the crew. And I asked the crew, I said, hey, is it OK if I announce that I'm working with you guys for this documentary? They had checked in with some people and the producer was like, yeah, you can post it. Just don't give any details. So I posted just a, a very vague tweet, like showing the cameraman, like, hey, working with Netflix on a documentary. I'll tell you guys more information later. That was it. It was a simple tweet. Here comes Janice. Janice. <laughs> Here Janice. comes Mr. Chameo. <laughs> <laughs> Hops on Twitter and makes a comment. Um, you'll have to pull up the exact tweet. I can't remember the exact tweet. It was like something trying to shade me and say, this woman knows nothing of what she's talking about. She's trying to blame influencers for the failure of her brand and just like went on this rant and tagged Netflix in it. Oh my God. That is, is so, so bad. Oh no. <laughs> and okay. this happened literally while I'm with the film crew. Type in Mar- uh, James Charles, Marlene Estelle. I think it was del- this he deleted. woman tweet. Oh, he deleted There's gotta be it. a it's screenshot yeah. somewhere on the internet. Go to, I'm go sure to Google, Google Ims. Yeah. Google Ims. I regret how I handled oh, this things. Was the apology. Oh, oh, apology. That was the apology. Yeah, his. Where's the original? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, did you say the original this says woman. hi, Netflix? Oh, yeah. That was my tweet. Filming today for a special documentary that airs 2019 with Netflix. Okay. That's all I said. And I showed the cameraman in the car as we were filming. Damn, and so he Jenna went after you. He says, this said. woman knows nothing about the industry other than blaming her bad business decisions and personal issues on influencers at Netflix. This is absurd. And I'd love to get in a room together and show you the non-bias outline I've already made on the subject that the documents document. all sides. The non-bias oh. outline. Non-biased, yes. This woman. He's 19 at this point. That's what kind of like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a lot of experience? That is unbelievable. Right, right, right. You literally just showed us a picture with him when he was young and innocent just getting into this industry and mm-hmm. then he he knows exactly who you are this mm-hmm. woman mm-hmm. this that is because he was extremely offensive yeah he was like trying to downplay like i don't know what i'm talking about because he was triggered because i had spoken up about shady practices from yep. some not all there's some amazing influencers that are completely authentic of course like, but you didn't even call him out i didn't call him out by name but i knew he knew that he was guilty of the shit i was talking about mm-hmm. because he got really triggered from that. well then just shut your mouth because yeah. you look even more guilty now yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like going That's on twitter I, was, like, yeah. I posted on there like hit dogs holler the loudest he was <laughs> hollering oh and howling oh my god so he got ripped up for this though people were pissed. people were pissed but it got so much media traction within oh. that time frame that it came back to netflix executives and so they were freaked out. They were freaked out. So while I was filming with the the film crew, the producer, they got on a call with the executives of Netflix. They were like, tell her to take that tweet down. It's getting too much commotion. Like, So then I'm feeling really stupid and feeling bad because I posted this tweet. And then, you know, Janice. Just the one up. promoting the. Ju- that's it. And they wanted you to take that down. They wanted me to take it down because James' response was like oh. causing all this commotion. Oh, okay, I see. So and if you took down the original, then okay, mm-hmm. okay. So they asked me to take the tweet down. I was like, no problem. Then I felt really bad. I'm apologizing. I didn't do anything wrong. I asked yeah. permission for that tweet, but I'm apologizing for his dumbass because he blew this thing up <laughs> oh my and God. made a big stink out of it. So now I'm looking like a fool. And like when I show up to work, especially with a professional team like Netflix, I'm coming with my A game. Like I'm being yeah. professional. I'm being kind. I'm like treating everyone with respect. So for me to be like put in a bad position like that, I was pissed. Oh, I, I was bet. so I'd be pissed. Furious. Like don't mess with my reputation. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Honestly, like you've shown quite a bit of restraint mm-hmm. yeah. in your public response. My I would response, be so I can't oh, even imagine what I would say. Dude. Yes. Yeah. My response, I responded. I try to keep it calm because I was not trying to add drama or fuel to the fire. I I put like you know, if you'd like to contact me privately, please let me know. I, I said something like very kind in return. And yeah, but I was still I was livid from that because that's making me look bad. I'm still with the crew actually filming at that moment. How awkward. Yeah. Yeah. That is so uncomfortable. Have so you, he was sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to ask. Have you ever talked to him like since? 
Yeah. The, no, we, we, exactly we private ask. message each other. I think after that he apologized or whatever, which it is what it is. I felt it was a fake bullshit apology. He DM'd you and apologized. Yeah. Okay. And then he made a Twitter. Yeah. A tweet. Yeah. Response to yeah. as well. Apologizing. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, but wow. then he blocked me after that. Oh, so. he's like, sorry, and we're done. <laughs> what? So he, no, I'm, I'm blocked on Twitter from him. Shut up. Yeah. After he apologized? Yeah, I think. What we, a weirdo. Yeah. Why? Janice, why? <laughs> Janice. What the hell, dude? Why? Are you so I took, the, I took the apology. I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was my experience with Janice Chemio. <laughs> wow. Dang. Mm-hmm. God. So now all of my audience, God, when uh, they see this woman, they're like, you remember when they... Jan just called her this woman, this and that. So now it's like, I almost take that term for myself as a part of an empowerment. Like mm-hmm. this woman is taking her power back. This woman had a $22 million company. This woman did like this and that. Like I. Mm-hmm. Snaps <laughs> to that. As we did back I in our sorority this days. Woman. I am yeah, this That's woman. That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> God. Oh my God, Jane. So, and he's launching his own makeup brand mm-hmm. now. It seems kind of late. I'm surprised he didn't ever do that sooner. I think he was supposed to do it with Morphe, to be honest. I'm pretty sure it was supposed uh, to be a Morphe kicked brand. the bucket a little bit. Yeah, yeah they kicked so, the bucket. Yeah, yeah, at least in the U.S. So that's what my speculation is. That's allegedly, I think it was supposed to be with Forma brand, but I think allegedly. he's trying to do it now on his own. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And it's, it's his new brand called Painted. Some, Painted something right, like yeah. Huh. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah. I was telling her earlier, there was an interesting campaign they tried to launch for the brand where they were asking people to submit like videos of them using I think just any makeup whatever creating looks and they wanted to find like models for the brand and he specifically said anyone can do this I think he actually used the term grandmas can do this and like you know anyone's welcome and all these people submitted these things and then they ended up picking like 10 beauty influencers like all typical around the influencer. same yeah the typical type person and so yeah yeah trying to get that free marketing in yep exactly but mm-hmm. gotta make it look like you're inclusive right yeah free marks <sighs> yeah that's true <laughs> wow yeah yeah that was a lot god you've you've been through a lot it's yeah. been a wild ride i'm not gonna lie yeah I've, you've seen so you've I've seen the seen whole lot. industry change so much all the brands that have popped up and mm-hmm. what is your overall consensus of the beauty industry right now Mm -hmm. and like the youtube space what is your take on it now i think like when i had first started on youtube it was very wholesome very like there was no drama like there just wasn't it was just a bunch of people loving Mm -hmm. putting on makeup sitting in their bedrooms on the floor so that's why i got into it to begin with because it was just very authentic Mm -hmm. and just real yeah and then i think when it blew up around you know 2014 or so and companies realized it was a big money making machine it became kind of this corporate thing and then over time it just got really toxic and i pulled out of the industry i stopped posting on youtube for i think right after 2019 when all this stuff went down i just was like you know what fuck this i'm out i don't want to be part of this anymore so pulled away it got really toxic i think right after covid is when things started to calm down a little bit but i feel like this year now the toxicity and all that drama is happening again but now it's more with the tiktok crowd instead mm. of youtube right so it's like deja vu but with a different crowd tiktok okay. is popping off man yeah, yeah. i don't really it's- know much about the like beauty space on tiktok like i've seen a few videos i feel like most of the makeup videos i see are people that don't have like massive followings mm, or yeah. i see a lot of makeup artists that like it's- really know what they're doing but i haven't so there's like influencers now oh yeah there's influencers that are even bigger than the the youtube space they have millions and millions and millions of subscribers but they're doing the same thing from what i'm seeing is not disclosing anything oh can i ask you oh (laughs) i was thinking you know lash gate yeah what are your thoughts that was some bullshit (laughs) sorry bullshit that was some bullshit i have nothing against michaela like i actually enjoy her videos so do we we did for a long time yeah Yeah. then i saw that i was like come on girl it was so disappointing it was disappointing and she never addressed it It never addressed it and like almost maybe she can't i don't know yeah, I just that was disappointing. It was it was kind of sad for me because I I really felt at the beginning of TikTok I was like oh cool this is kind of like what YouTube was when yeah. I started years ago like it's, yeah it's authentic it's raw it's not overly produced this and that so I was really excited then I I've seen more things like that not just Lash Gate yeah. of not disclosing and stuff I'm like this is deja vu this is the same bullshit new day yeah yeah we talked um a little bit about Lash Gate mm-hmm. here 
And yeah, that was that was pretty shocking. We, mm -hmm. you know, it's just odd to me because all these people are and us three included. You're building your brand off of people trusting you. And yeah. when you endorse something, even if you're getting paid for it, I mean, we don't endorse something, even if it's sponsored, that we wouldn't use or that right. we hate or whatever. Right, right. So it's like you're building trust with people. Yeah. And they're the reason why you have all these views and have yeah. all these opportunities. Why would you not at least just be honest? You're not saying you have to go buy it. Be like, yeah, I got yeah. paid for it. It's sponsored. And if I liked it or whatever, and if you want to go buy it, then go buy it. And if yeah, not, maybe then don't whatever. add fake lashes and <laughs> yes. lie about the right. effects like, of it. Like why your audience are, you are a bunch of dumb fucks. Like, yeah. Right. Like they have eyes to see that that's right. not... That's fake. And especially <laughs> yeah. when you're someone as big as Michaela, she's one of the biggest beauty tiktokers out there right now she's mm -hmm. under a microscope people are watching her every single move like dude yeah, <laughs> yeah. stupid why yeah. would you do that yeah because yeah. uh, this is one advice i would give not to sound like i'm like a mom or an old, you know old whatever <laughs> but it's like what i've learned since my time of being in the space is that you can hit top fame and skyrocket really fast but you'll drop really really fast if you yeah. don't have a good reputation with your fan base to build it if mm -hmm. you start fucking around and start lying to them and all that mm -hmm. that fame will disappear just as yeah. fast as you rose up to it and what are you going to have after that yeah because in some degree like your fans are your boss like you are there to please them and yeah, yeah you that's know, such a good point you know what i mean like, like Yep. You want them to be with you for the long haul. Like yeah. you want them to stay loyal with you so you can have a long term career of doing something. Like yeah. they don't want to be lied to. If they see no. that, they're gonna go support. Well, you like else. you never can get that out of your mind. Like I was I really liked Michaela. You I was too. like so Loved in her, her videos. Too. I bought so many products yeah. based on her recommendations. Yeah. And after that happened, I was just like, damn it. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. I thought you were so authentic, like yeah. the most authentic person I was seeing in the space, like mm -hmm. so real. And yeah, you know, Ugh. yeah. And yeah. it's hard for me to like keep my mouth quiet on all of it because I see so many sponsorships that are happening that I see in my inbox. Yes. That, I, that are not disclosed that the I know same full things. well. And I just like it takes every ounce of my being not to speak up on it because I'm like, that's bullshit. I know yep. that sponsor because yep. I got that same email. <laughs> yeah, that would be really, <laughs> same really product. hard. Same product. Which do you is, think it's I'm just curious from a since you know so much about the industry, do you think what do you think happened? Do you think L'Oreal asked her to do that or do you think they just approved know. it and they didn't know? I think they approved it just thinking that no one would care. I don't know if they would have asked her to do that because I think if there's any records of that, that's a huge liability on them. So I don't mm. think L'Oreal would be stupid enough to, to ask. That's that. what I, I was thinking. So too. I don't think L'Oreal had anything to do with Maybe it. Maybe they I, missed it too. Maybe they didn't even realize. Yeah. I think they just, you know, because they have so many people that, I mean, it's a yeah. multi-billion dollar company. Like they're Quick probably, approvals. Yeah. Right, just yep. Check the approval. Okay, that looks good. They're probably not even thinking yeah. anything of it. it. Slips through the cracks because they're just like, okay, you know. It's bizarre to me though. Like, why would you put fake lashes on? Because what? Why do you care whether or not your followers even go out and buy the product? Like, you got your bag. That's what you we were did your to job. You got you got paid. What and was the point of right. the lie? Because if you can convince people to buy more of your product then you get more and bigger sponsorships later on but how does it prove because it's not like how it was like go to l'oreal.com slash michaela it was just like you know go to king supers your local drugstore and go buy it mm -hmm. how do you track like oh those sales were because of her because so we would do this too with influencers and that's why people would say well you don't know you didn't get the roi i'm like yes i do you're able to track it because what we would do is you have a graph of sales to see on average of what this product brings in. And so even uh -huh. for us, if people wanted to come back at us and say, well, I need to be paid X amount for this video, I can go back and say, hey, well, you posted a Make a Geek product on this on this date and I'll show them a graph and say it did not spike up at all. I can't mm. pay this amount because I know I'm not going to get a return on that because I already have, sorry, proof. You're good. You, you can look at statistics and just- yeah see if there's a major spike there especially with someone that large you're gonna see a pretty big spike if all of her fans are buying that they're gonna see a jump in their graph like of, even in the first couple of days mm -hmm. general sales yeah okay so maybe they like had each influencer post a few days apart or a week apart mm -hmm. and then they can see kind of what each one's impact mm -hmm. is interesting mm -hmm. okay that makes more so sense. that's why she's like i gotta make this because we were really thinking good. was there some type of bonus right. or something where if you if you hit a certain sales goal mm -hmm. that maybe you there can out. be yeah yeah there can mm -hmm. be some of that too but i'm just saying like from how we did it and other brand owners i know is you know they can track it they just track their average sales going back several months and 
seeing if there was any spike during that time. And sure. You know? Okay. Got it. Because it is it is kind of hard to track, like you said. Sure. Like, and I yeah. think that's why there's always a constant battle between brand owners and content creators is knowing if they're going to make that ROI back or not because it is so hard to track. So it's kind of a gamble on the brand to say, okay, we're going to pay this amount and just hope we get that money back. Mm -hmm. And then for the creator, obviously, it's like, I'm going to do all this work. I need to be paid for that time. So it's a constant like push and pull between the two. It's Mm -hmm. a really difficult balance. Interesting. Yeah. Makes sense though. You are just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. It's so interesting to talk to you. Yeah. (laughs) I'm learning a lot about the industry. But I don't want to like, only talk about that because you are so much more than makeup and everything that's happened to you. I wanted to, obviously there's a lot you've got going on in the works right now that you can't talk about yet, but Mm -hmm. exciting things are coming. Yes. Have a new brand launching later this year. Okay. I won't say the name yet. (laughs) Coming soon. But it is launching later this year. And then on Makeup Geek site is not going to sell product anymore, but it's going to be turned into an educational hub. I saw that. Online Academy. That is awesome. So cool. So what will that look like? Oh, it's amazing. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be full on Academy. Like I took classes in Paris years ago and I did a training like this is beyond anything I even learned there it's full on wow and it's not just for makeup artists it's for everyday person to learn specific skills that are catered to them like it's it's called pretty much personalized beauty wow so you would like take a picture of yourself or like it is it are you teaching mm-hmm. oh my oh gosh my that gosh. is so I want to cool. do it yeah so there'll be different options depending on what level you want to do if it's like if you want to watch specific videos that go over different topics or if you want a group lesson with people or if you want a one-on-one with me there's different packages that okay. people can get okay oh that is um, so cool yeah because you're me ma- i can't stop looking at your makeup know, right now it is so, so good. F- like how do you get your highlighter like that like it's just I guess we can learn at the Academy. (laughs) And it it goes deep, like really deep. And it's like when you walk away from the Academy, it's like you know what your undertone is, what your eye shape is, what your face shape is. That's what I need. What products you're supposed to be getting, what products to avoid, what works for you, how to shape your brow, like everything that like you would ever want to learn specific customized to like everything about you specifically. I learned, I was watching one of your videos this morning and you were talking about how the base, which I've heard like, your skin base is so important for how your makeup is going to lay. And then you were telling me how like, oh, I get more oily on the sides of my nose. So I tend to like, you know, use less oily products there, but then or like a mattifying, you know, primer here. But then on places where I get dry, then I'll add like an oil or more. I'm like, damn, that's smart. I'm just over here like, eh. yeah. Like, yeah and then I complain because yeah. my makeup's like shit after yeah, like two hours. <laughs> There's definitely lots of tips and tricks. So I think a lot of people are like, oh, she's just going to like have this academy and charge money for tutorial. It's not tutorial based. It's like literal education. Like if you were to take a makeup academy somewhere and like learn this stuff and there'll be visuals and syllabuses and oh guides wow. and PDFs and like all this supporting documentation and visuals that come along with it. So wow. you have tangible things like lookbooks, idea books, quizzes, um, shopping guides, like all of that. So so if someone wants to become a makeup artist and isn't sure where to start, they could start there. And, like, Definitely it's build a great place career. to start for Do sure. Do you get like a certificate at the mm-hmm. end and stuff? That's so cool. That's so accessible. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So I'm really excited. That's like one piece of the puzzle. So that'll be what Makeup Geek turns into. Oh, well, that's such a great ending for it is makeup mm-hmm. geek, and it's you such, know, a, final still such a great point. name for it mm-hmm. oh it's such you know? a great name for it yes. so fitting yeah. yes because it's almost like it kind of brings like the scholastic into it right mm-hmm. that's so good yes. oh i'm pumped that's i want to take it yeah. i need me too. help yeah me too so i'm excited <laughs> so that's what i've been working on a lot the last several months and then um a podcast will launch this summer oh, i was gonna ask if we yes. could ask about that we're so excited <laughs> yes I'm I've hoping been trying to, to launch that it. for a few. I told, I did a video. I was going to launch the podcast a few years ago, actually. And then I had my daughter and I was like, my focus was on her. So yeah, now I'm like, she's old enough to write. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Yep. So podcast this summer. And then uh, later this year will be the new brand. Big year ahead for Huge you. Yeah. Wow. So many exciting things. Yes. Mm-hmm. God, I'm really inspired by just what a hustler you are too. Yeah. And like when the, all that annoying shit and terrible things happen to you and now you're like turning it into even more amazing things just it's very inspiring it really is yeah, yeah. I I s- make some lemonade that's, that's right, right. Yes. And you've had you've had a lot of lemons even in your personal life beyond all of this i mean all of this kind of seems mm-hmm. like not insignificant but in the grand scheme of what you have been through yeah, personally mm-hmm. in the last few years um mm-hmm. yeah you are just so incredibly strong Thank and inspiring you. to me Thank you. what 
what kind of things are you able to talk about? What kind of things you want to talk about on your podcast? Yeah, so it's all going to be about women empowerment. So it'll be about things that women deal with um, that I've personally gone through, like how to spot abusive relationships before you get into one. What mm. what are the warning signs? How to get out once you get in? How to balance life as a professional woman while still being a mom? How to feel confident when you struggle with weight? Like I've struggled with weight my whole life, and that's been a really big like hurdle for me to try to get over is feeling beautiful or worthy enough. Yeah. Um. So feeling worthy, you know, as a woman at all sorts of sizes and ages and um, just a lot of topics, building business from the ground up. Like what does that look like for a woman starting from scratch? What can she, what steps can she take to get a business started? It's pretty much everything that I've gone through that kind of relates to mostly women in general. I love that. It's going to be amazing. I'm like so excited to me listen too. to this. Yeah. I mean, all of those topics Such a are idea. interesting yeah. to me. Absolutely. Hoping all of the ad money and all of the, if I do any sponsorships in that specific series, um, that'll all go to Houston area's Women's Center. It's a, sorry, I get emotional. It's a domestic abuse shelter in Houston. And that's where I really want to focus my energy on is supporting domestic abuse shelters. That's, that's incredible, amazing. I, that's I mean, really a, beautiful and yes, <laughs> so selfless. And you're going to help so many mm -hmm. women just so by many. allowing them to, you know, listen to you and hear your advice and build that community. But then also those women who are, you know, utilizing those resources are, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they're just gonna, feeling empowered enough yeah. to be able to get out of the relationships that they're in and like start a new life for themselves. Absolutely. You are going to help so many people. Like oh. it's, it's going to be amazing. And we were just talking in the car about, how therapeutic podcasting can be. Mm -hmm. And I it think really is. you'll be helping yourself while helping others yep. and then further helping others that don't even listen to the show by, you know, funding funding these incredibly important organizations. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Um, after everything you've been through, you've just maintained your values, your character, mm -hmm. and just, I'm really proud of you. And yeah. as a fan for so long, it's amazing to have seen your journey and then to have you sitting here yeah. in person with us <laughs> has just blowing been, my mind. It is. I'm like totally I'm still like keeping, keeping out like, over here. You're literally podcasting with Marlena right now. Right? Like, 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 what the fuck? I'm gonna dude. go home and be like, ah Seriously, <laughs> I would have fully tweaked out about I'm tweaking now, but like if my younger self knew this, like she would oh be like, Oh my god. What? Makeup <laughs> geek is like insane. Owner of makeup <laughs> yeah, geek. Like what? Right? How amazing. So yeah. I'm I'm happy to be here because I always have so much respect for you because like I love your values and what you stand for. Like every Thank time you. You post something because you're so respectful of the families that you gen I can tell you genuinely want to help people. Yeah. Like you yeah. want to help the families you talk about that and just the woman that you are and that you the work you. you're doing. Like I will always write for you. Like oh yes, I'm like I love what you stand for. And I like every time you tweet something, like just being bold <laughs> and saying something, I'm like, yes. I'm, I love seeing I'm literally clapping. you on Twitter being like, <laughs> yes. not afraid to speak out and call out these crazy mm -hmm. transphobes and these yes crazy anti-women people and like i'm so over it at this point yes, I just don't, yeah i don't have a filter anymore i just i'm so done and, and i i'm i'm so feisty and blunt now after having my daughter because i don't yeah. want her to grow up in the same world yeah. that i'm seeing right now yep i want her world to be better than mine yeah we've been talking a lot about that just how much more prominent it becomes for you once you be once you have a child that's going to grow up in this world that will be here after you're gone yes like it, yeah. it just brings it all into perspective of like how important it is yeah. to speak up and to try your best to impact. I mean, Crazy we're only one person, but like still, if it's you still can make an it infect and like change one person's mind, yeah. then it's worth it for me. Absolutely. Right. Or like stand up for someone who feels like no one's representing them. And exactly. even if it's one person, yep. it, it means the world. It does. God, there are so much that we could talk about. I know. Um, like, when can you come back? I'm like, well, I'm already thinking, <laughs> like, we maybe do? we can do something soon. Or once your podcast launches, we can do, like, some type of little collab and really get that. into the real important issues. All of this beauty stuff it's is still interesting. It's, it's still important. important. Like, you know, everything that you went through and all the lessons that you've learned. But you yeah. have so much more to offer beyond that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We would, yeah. we would love to have you back. This has been really fun for us yes. and thank, thank you, you for so being much. vulnerable and sharing yes. your story and, and trusting us to like you know host you as you talk about some of like the worst things yeah. that you've been through and yeah. you know i really appreciate it yeah i'm glad you guys invited me i'm, I'm always happy to be here <laughs> well yay we love yeah, having we you believe we're like she'll be back she's gonna come she'll I'm be so. back soon <laughs> yes 
Um, This has been so great. If you guys are interested, everything that you'll need to know that, you know, Marlena has explained in the show will be in the show notes and the description box on YouTube. So you can access uh, when does Academy launch again? We're looking, we're hoping to get up by June, but it might be end up being July. Okay. That's soon. Yeah, Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. really soon. So that's coming really soon, guys. Mark your calendars tentatively that that's going to be available to you. And I'm sure many of you will be able to utilize that. Um, All of her social media will be linked below her YouTube Mm -hmm. channel. You know, she does amazing videos as well. I need to, I really need help with my foundation. (laughs) Same. It's like a daily My base, struggle. that's always like, yeah. It's just, always the foundation. It's yeah. so annoying. And then I look up close and I'm like, oh my God, that's what I look like. Yeah. Actually, just, before we go, can I ask you what foundation is your favorite? I have a couple. I love NARS Sheer Glow. That's NARS my jam. Sheer Glow. But if you have oily skin, really you might not too. like it. But if you, really? have, if you have oily skin, Milani Conceal and Perfect is pretty okay. good. But okay. if you want the dewy look, I mix the two. So I oh. put NARS Sheer Glow on the outer part of the oh. face. Where I'm oily, I'll put the Milani. See? It's so smart. And yeah. what do you use to apply? I use a buffing brush for the NARS Sheer Glow. Anissa makes really great brushes. They're Anissa. incredible. They okay. have good brushes. And then for the Milani, because it's so thick, is uh, just a sponge. A blender. <laughs> Carly's literally Googling oh, it. I'm buying She's like, right to car. Now. <laughs> yes, the brushes are amazing. I'm actually working on a video for them this month. Ooh. And they, the owner is such a kind person. Ooh. She does some great work. She's Never very, like, this. it's a woman-owned brand. Totally gonna oh, be wow, snatching great reviews. These up. Yeah, That's the brush I'm, I use the pin- Pinnacle Foundation. I'm brush. getting it right now. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. Um, I'm in the market for some new brushes. And the concealer brush is good too. The there's a concealer brush that I I have in my bag. Actually, so you don't like the beauty blenders then? The beauty blenders will work for thicker foundation, but for okay. more dewy ones, a brush buffing it in works better. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Because sometimes the sponge will soak it up. Mm-hmm. And it'll give you patchy and it'll waste product. Mm. See, so. she's a wealth of knowledge, you guys. <laughs> There's so much I need to learn about makeup. Dude, same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my problem is it just like dissolving by the end of the day. Yep. I look in the yep. mirror at the end of the day. I'm like, I'm like I, whoa. <laughs> recently, Sydney oh, and I yeah. were hanging out. And <laughs> after she left, I went upstairs and looked. My bronzer looked like dirt was literally <laughs> wiped down my face. It was oh. so, I sent her a video. I'm like, Did, why didn't you tell me I looked like this? <laughs> I didn't even, no, I started to even notice. And then all of a sudden, like I saw the photo. I was like, what Like the? he was crazy looking. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Oh my god! Mine's Am I like, like this the, all the creepiness time? and here and the under eyes. Mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, like I get these like weird spots under here. It looks like, and then yeah. if I, this is my pet peeve: is I want to do the concealer under the eyes, and I used to do that, but then it would like, it would get so creased so yeah. bad, and they're like, oh, we'll set it with powder. And I would yeah. do that, and it would just look terrible. I'm like, I don't know what to do, so I just gave up, and now I don't even use concealer under the eyes. <laughs> oh yeah use a matte finish foundation like the milani one and just tap it under there you may not even need powder because it's matte enough and you just do a light layer then you don't have to set it right okay. because your under eyes look good yeah like, they look really yeah. good i'll show you my techniques okay <laughs> Ooh. all right we need to go That's buy a, a private tutorial yeah on <laughs> yeah make a geek academy yeah we we'll absolutely will yes yes oh that'd be so fun <laughs> you would love that okay Sweet. well she's gonna come back eventually but um this has been so much fun thank you guys for tuning in thank you so much marlena for thank making the trek all the way out here and thank almost you. not being able to breathe i know yeah i know it's it's pretty rough out here but <laughs> are you getting used to it at all a little bit a little i better? can be better today than last okay, good. at least i feel like i'm not dying anymore uh, so that's good good yeah that would that's not good. <laughs> yes. I'm glad you're better. <laughs> well, this has been Sweet. so much fun. Yes. Um, Thank everyone, you guys for watching. Everyone, make sure to follow Marlena, mm-hmm. please. Everything will be linked below. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. We will be back next week. We'll see you on, on the next, next sesh. sesh. But keep until it. then, keep it fresh. Keep it Kendall's fresh. still learning the outro two years later. <laughs> I just mixed the mile higher outro yeah, this one. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's we'll okay. see you guys next time. Keep it fresh. All right, peace. <laughs>